into the end zone. Touchdown, Jamal Lewis! It's a beautiful day in Baltimore for week two of the NFL season as the Pittsburgh Steelers take on the Baltimore Ravens, a rivalry that both teams recognize as their fiercest. An absolutely gorgeous day here in the Baltimore area. It is windy, though, and that will be playing with some of the kicks this afternoon that we'll be watching, but it's just below 70 degrees. You can see this series history. The Steelers have won six of the last seven games here in Baltimore. Well, isn't it a rivalry when both teams win? It's pretty one-sided for Pittsburgh. They might not like each other, but the Steelers usually win. You can see the weather, and you take a look at Bill Cowher, who is in his 13th season as the longest tenured head coach with one team in the NFL. Former defensive coordinator in Kansas City with Marty Schottenheimer. And the kickoff by Reed, and we are underway in Baltimore. And this is rookie B.J. Sands who takes it out near the 20-yard line before he is brought down by Veron Haynes. And there is a flag on the play with that 20-yard return. Our officials today, Walt Coleman is our referee. Illegal block in the back, 32, other return team, 10-yard penalty, first down. So there's quarterback Kyle Bowler, who has picked off twice in Cleveland and looks to rebound here at home, where he is 3-1 and one as a starting quarterback. Baltimore welcoming back seven-time Pro Bowl left tackle Jonathan Ogden, who missed last week with the knee. And running back Jamal Lewis is coming off a 57-yard game against the Cleveland Browns. It is first and 10 with the handoff to Lewis and tripped up by Von Olhoffen. After a gain of four, and he is out to the 14-yard line. The Pittsburgh defense with Pro Bowl nose tackle Casey Hampton in the middle. He anchors the defensive line. Linebacker Clark Higgins had two sacks last week. It's a great core there. And Pulumayalu is the fine safety for Pittsburgh. Second down and six from the 14. And they give it off to Lewis again who is taken down by Hope in the secondary he's to the 22 and it's a gain of nine and it's a Baltimore first down well if you're going to really get fancy with Baltimore the fanciness for Baltimore should happen in this zone right here when they get fancy that just means Jamal Lewis picks his spot between his guards puts his head down and starts looking for people to smack that's a fancy Baltimore play Couple tight ends with Lewis in the backfield and Kevin Johnson in motion and some more Jamal Lewis. As he is banging his way and hard to bring down and again in the secondary, it's Hope who brings him down after a gain of 11 yards on the play. Well, I know one thing. When this back out of the University of Tennessee gets fired up, you would best bring help and you would best not try to grab him. That's four grabs. And one trio trying to bring Jamal Lewis down, and he just uh, keeps on grinding. Concentrate on his lower body and his legs, and you'll just be impressed. Last year's Offensive Player of the Year in the NFL, and he gets it again as he's gained right there now 28 yards on a couple carries this afternoon. They're going to mark him at the 38-yard line. And this is what he was not doing last week, but we did see the Cleveland Browns so we could go put four in the line and four linebackers against Lewis. Well, also... Last week, Baltimore had the worst field position they've had in uh, probably years. This is a team that going last year, Brian Billick's club had the best field position for their offense in the NFL. After one week, they're out their they're 32nd. Chester they Taylor has come in the backfield, second down six from the 38. And Bowler to Taylor. A nice block. And there goes Taylor with the foot race. A flag is down. The tackle is eventually made by Chad Scott at the 26-yard line. That is a run of 36 yards. 
Orlando Brown laid some heavy wood on that offensive line for the Ravens. You remember, they basically put the Denver Broncos running attack in here. And when you're talking the Denver Broncos offensive line running attack, the emphasis is on the backside blocks. You saw the importance of Mulatalos on that first big runs, run of uh, Jamal Lewis's, and this run was all about the backside. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. The official ran into the coach on the sideline. We will penalize 15 yards from the end of the run. It will be first and 10. Well, Brian, Brian needs to get his get-back coach right about now. So it pushes him back to the 41-yard line. They were down on the 26. And Billick, you could see him barking on the sideline, trying to clear people away. It is a first down nonetheless. Jamal Lewis is still out, and they keep in Chester Taylor in the backfield. That was a career-long 36-yard run by Chester Taylor. The two tight ends are in there. And it's first down and 10 yards to go from the 41-yard line for Kyle Bowler. Now he's on the run. A flag is thrown. Hagen's in pursuit. Failure pushes him out of bounds at the 27-yard line. That's a 14-yard game, but could be wiped yeah. away. Hey, I think it's going to be on Edwin Mulatalo, the left, the left guard. See, in a way, though, this kind of plays into Baltimore's M.O. They've got it as a football team. They have a chip on their shoulder kind of like the Raiders. I think the Ravens assume they're never going to get the break and it, it helps Brian Billick kind of build that whole us against the world kind of a deal. There's a left guard right there. Edwin Mulatalo. He catches a little bit. Now first and 20 with the penalty back to the 48. Taylor remains. Lewis is still on the sideline. And Chester Taylor tripped up by Casey Hampton and falls ahead for a gain of a couple to the 50-yard line. Stent tracks is a thing you're going to see coming out of our eye box up there in the upper left-hand corner. It adds a new element to the broadcast. Every play, you'll see updated stats of the offensive players involved in that play. And if you're a fantasy player and you have players involved in this game, it gives you something to keep track of. Second down and 19, and Lewis is back in the game from the 50-yard line. And Bowler with traffic around, somehow squirts free. And he's got to get to the 31, and he's very close to a first down. Probably down at the 32-yard line is where they'll mark him, and two flags are on this play after the 18-yard scramble by Kyle Bowler. Well, that scramble was made possible by Jamal Lewis. Because Jamal Lewis does a wonderful job. Concentrate on Jamal back there. Watch the blitz coming out of the backfield. There's foot 50. Jamal just gets a little bang on him. And that gives Kyle Bowler that space to be able to get out of the pocket. And as he's sliding, that quarterback declares slide. You cannot hit the quarterback once he goes into that slide. Two tight ends, including Heap, 18-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go. And Jamal Lewis runs into his own quarterback and then finally runs into the grasp of Larry Foote, who is replacing the injured Kendrell Bell. It's a gain of one to the 17-yard line. You know, coming into this ball game, I, I, I got a couple things I want to keep track of. One is Pittsburgh. We've spent so much time talking about the running game. What it's really about is a balanced offense. And Deion Sanders, we say 35 plays. Remember last week when he played 14, but he's going to return some kicks. And we'll see him on some offensive plays, too, playing some wide receivers as decimated as that wide receiver core is. Two tights, two wides. They got Lewis in the backfield. It's second down nine from the 17 as Lewis takes his... Run off the guard and crosses the 15-yard line down to about the 13-yard line before he's brought down by Kersky on that defensive line in a gain of four. Well, this drive has got Baltimore kind of written all over it. We talked about last week he's kind of arrogance. Let's see some execution. This is Baltimore's kind of drive. This is nine straight runs. I mean, they tried a couple passes. They turned into runs. 
but this is a Baltimore Ravens drive. They almost have as many yards rushing now as they had all last week. Taylor in the backfield, Clarence Moore the third receiver, third and a long five at the 14-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Bowler with the throw, and it's caught by Heath, the Pro Bowler dives inside the three. He picks up 10, it's a first down for the Baltimore Ravens, tackled on the play by Scott, first and goal to go for Baltimore. Yeah, this this ball game tends to be not for the not for the faint of heart when these two teams get together because it's so physical. But tight ends like Todd Heath fit perfectly into the mo because once you hit him, he's not going backwards. He comes out of the inside, runs up the hash mark there right up the seam, breaks out into that clearing pattern. He's wide open. First and goal. Jamal Lewis is back in the game and the call with the recard block and a Baltimore touchdown. Well, do you think Jonathan Ogden and these two guys being together on the left side, it's not Mike Flynn at center, it's Casey Robach, but what a good combination. Ogden gets a man, Mulatalo gets a man, and Jamal Lewis says, hmm, just like old times. Ravens get their first offensive touchdown of the season with the extra point put up and in by Matt Stover. So a good-looking drive of 11 plays and 90 yards, 8.58 to play in the first quarter. And Jamal Lewis, the Offensive Player of the Year in the NFL, puts the Ravens on top on the game opening drive. Jamal Lewis averaged a little over five yards per carry on that 11-play drive. Chester Taylor had a run for 36 yards and a three-yard touchdown run in the game's opening drive. Now the ensuing kickoff. And it's Coakley, the rookie, who brings it up to the 24-yard line, and he is brought down on the play. After a 14-yard game, we're going to take a look at Tommy Maddox here in a second. And the Pittsburgh Steelers with 8.54 to play in the first. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 39. Dr. Pepper and your Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. And by IBM, making on-demand business a reality for companies around the world. Even the remnants of Ivan couldn't keep the boat races from the Baltimore Inner Harbor from going off without a hitch yesterday. 25-yard line, a Jamal Lewis Baltimore touchdown run. Has put the Ravens on top, 7-0 Maddox right to work on first and 10, dropped by Plexico Burris, who is covered on the play by Baxter. There is a flag on the play as you take a look at Tommy Maddox, who had a five-year layoff before coming back to the NFL, then into the 2002 season after a year in the old XFL, won the Comeback Player of the Year award in the league as you take a look at Walt Coleman. This is obviously against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Illegal motion, 86, offense. A penalty is declined, second down. Well, it's Tommy Maddox who set a single season record last year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was 13 of 22 last week against the Raiders. Jeff Hardings is key in the middle against the first time starter for the Ravens on the line. And Hines Ward led the AFC in receptions a year ago, second down and 10. And Deuce Staley, the ex-Philadelphia Eagle running back, is brought down by Ray Lewis and company near the 32-yard line. And it's a gain of six on the play. Well, it nose tackle Kelly Gregg out. Ake Kimuatu takes his place, and that is a very important position on that line. Ray Lewis will get the headlines in the linebacking core, but Ed Hartwell helps write the stories most of the time for the Ravens. And safety, Ed Reed plays like a linebacker. He's in the secondary, now joined by Deion Sanders. Third down, long three from the 32. Antoine Randall-L is another receiver along with Mays. So four receivers for Maddox. And he's got Haynes in the backfield. It's caught by Ward, who is drilled by Reed. A flag is thrown. And the gain is for five to the 36-yard line. It looks like it's going to be against Pittsburgh again. I think they're going to call... Uh... 
Ward for pushing up. Pass interference. 89. Offense. That's Lee Mays, who is the fourth wide receiver in there with Randall L. Ward and Burris. Well, there, there's May right there. Little pick action. Just kind of comes right through his shoulder. I don't know about that. Chad Williams also comes in in the secondary, so six numbering back there for Baltimore. Now third and 13, and the ball's at the 22-yard line. Staley has come in with Haynes, and there are three receivers, including Antoine Randall L. for Tommy Maddox from the gun. Williams in his face, an incomplete. Chad Williams coming up from that hybrid safety uh, linebacker, sixth defensive back position, foiled it. Now Pittsburgh's got to punt the ball. And, and you know, down the field, when you're bringing that kind of heat, if you got some pretty good coverage going on, you, you got a plus. And there's Dion sort of doing what Dion does. The, the new Dion no bump rule has been put in for him. And, you know, he's, he's playing bump, he's up close, and he's not touching him. That's that ability to stay with a guy, and that wasn't just any guy. That was Pascal Burris. From a Browns punter, Chris Gardaki gets it away, and B.J. Sands is back. There goes a flag and the diving catch at the 45-yard line for the Baltimore Ravens on a 33-year-long, year uh, long, uh, yard long, I guess, or year long, whatever it is. gardaki has been in the league. It was it up there like a while, but not quite yards, that long. <laughs> it seems like he's been in the league that long. It has been, what, 14, 15 years for Gardaki, a former pro bowler. What did you think of the wind when you were down there on the sidelines this morning? Well, it's pretty equal opportunity. I was watching the, the place kickers for both teams. They both stroke them through from about 50 yards. So, you know, I think with the way this stadium's built, it doesn't have any one direction. During their return, holding 38 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. That's Raymond Walls. A look at Dion, who is out there on that last series with 7.26 to play in the first, and a Jamal Lewis touchdown run has the Ravens on top. And it's not too late to play fantasy football to play now. Just log on to CBSSportsLine.com and click on Fantasy Football after the punt by Pittsburgh from the 36-yard line, first and 10 for Kyle Bowler. He's got a tight end in there, and he'd spread out wide, and a run up the middle of Ferrier stopping Jamal Lewis for a gain of about two. A flag is down, 37-yard line. We have seen more flags to begin this game. Six have been called so far in the opening minutes of this game. Illegal motion, 86, offense. That's at least the climb. Second down. Well, folks, it's premiere Monday on CBS, beginning with Still Standing and Listen Up. Then the season premiere of Everybody Loves Raymond, Two and a Half Men, CSI Miami, and the late show with David Letterman. John Kerry will be joining him. That's all on America's most watched network, CBS. Second down and nine. From the 37-yard line for Kyle Bowler. Rush comes on from Higgins and Hampton. He slides down again before Ferrier decks him at about the 43 and shy of the first down and a scramble of six. Just a smart play. Didn't try to push it. Didn't try to go too much with it. Kyle Bowler read right, read left, and said, I'm going to run. That was a smart play by Kyle Bowler. Bowler happy to see Jonathan Ogden come back, the seven-time pro bowler at his left tackle position. Not as much as Jamal Lewis was on that first drive. Pretty obvious, uh, you know, he and Mulatalo on that left side just... It's like peanut butter and jelly together over there. Third and three. The two tight ends, including Jones. Lewis was spread out as a wide out, and the pass is caught by Heap, who is whacked by Townsend, and a gain of two and shy of a first down by about a yard. Kevin, that's like getting a two guard trying to trying to guard a power forward. I mean, Heap's got such a physical advantage. Watch Heap going against Townsend. I mean, how do you stop this if you're Townsend? You're with him? You're with him? I think what the word is is that he stepped out of bounds at the very end there before he actually stretched that right. ball out. That's why this ball is short of the first down, I think. Well, I don't know. The spot looks to be pretty generous. It's beyond the 46, or I guess the last part right, of the football is touching right there the 46. Right on the 41, yeah. 46. 46. Yeah. And they give him the first down. 
But that's just a, you know, Townsend couldn't cover Heat much better. He's right there with him. It's just Heat's just physically so much bigger than a defensive back. When you get those matchups and you see that, if you're Kyle Bowler, you've got to take advantage of that. So it is a first down from the 46-yard line with Lewis remaining in the backfield. Row, row, row. And Bowler with his two tight ends once again, finding time this time, and throws for Kevin Johnson with the coverage applied by Deshae Townsend. Pulamalu in the secondary. Second down. Say almost every play, Kevin, you're, you're seeing Pulamalu in the proverbial box. Unless they do something motion-wise and formation-wise to get him out there, functionally, Pittsburgh is running kind of what Cleveland did with the four linebackers, but they're using their strong safety as a fourth linebacker because he's no more than three or four yards away from those defensive linemen. He, for all intents and purposes, even right here, is a linebacker on the left side of the scrimmage, left side of the line of scrimmage. Hines, the lone wide receiver, second down 10, and Hines, the former quarterback at Grambling, is hit hard by Deshane Townsend at the 48-yard line. It's a gain of three, and up to the 49-yard line as we take you to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Kevin, at Tennessee, the Colts and the Titans. Titans took the opening kickoff, and Chris Brown finished the drive off with a 20-yard touchdown run. Indy has put a field goal on the board, so right now it's a 7-3 Tennessee lead as they approach the end of the first quarter. Kevin and Randy, back to you. Oh, Greg, thank you. Chris Brown at 100 yards on the ground last week in the opener against the Miami Dolphins for the Tennessee Titans. Third down and seven, 49-yard line. Taylor is in the backfield for Bowler. He throws, and it's caught by Kevin Johnson. He was hit by Scott and by Townsend. He's got the first down to the Pittsburgh Steeler 42-yard line and a pickup of eight yards. Now, here's an example of what this Baltimore offense needs to do. Commented already, already that Kyle Bowl is playing a little smarter. He needs these wide receivers like Kevin Johnson, like Randy Himes, to come up big, make plays, take advantage of what you're getting. Pittsburgh showed a blitz look, dropped off into a zone, nice pattern right past the sticks for first down. Taylor remains, seventh play of the drive, 42-yard line, first down and 10. And this is Chester Taylor at a nice long run the first time. They have the ball. Higgins is there with Pulamalu and a gain of a yard out of the 41. I'll tell you, Pulamalu is going to come out of this game. He's going to need a neck roll. Well, it was interesting what Bill Cowher said. He says, in a division that has Todd Heap, well, he kind of has, has a neck roll there, Jamal Lewis, <laughs> <laughs> and They're Kellen Winslow. Pet. This is what they got this kid for, to stop those kinds of plays. Well, that's that's what he was like at USC, high-impact safety. A guy that can really come up and smack, and they don't want to really get him not to be very, very aggressive and stick his nose in there on runs. Lewis back in, second down and 10 from the 41. And Jamal Lewis brought down by Kimo Von Olhoffen at the 38. They pick up a four yards. See, when you look at two, just, just look at first downs in this game so far. Just the, the control of the ball. You've seen, you've seen Pittsburgh put into a situation. See, already today, 41 yards and a touchdown. It took them about three quarters to do that last week against Cleveland. I mean, they're loading the box, and Baltimore is still bringing the run, and so far, they're not really stopping them. Kyle Bowler is 4 of 5, third down and 6 at the 38-yard line with Lewis in the backfield. And the Jones uh, heap came to the tight end. The blitz by Townsend, and down goes Bowler back at the 46-yard line. He came right around the end, a loss of nine. I don't know if that was Orlando Brown who let that corner come in, but he had a full head of steam. There's, there's Townsend right there, 26, bottom of the screen coming through. You know, that's more of a case of lull you to sleep. You're loading the box, you're loading the box, you're loading the box, and instead of bringing the safety, suddenly you bring that, cor that corner right off the corner. Little Blitzburg defense by new coordinator Dick LeBeau as Dave Zastadil gets ready to punt the ball off to Antoine Randall back at the 10 yard line for the Pittsburgh Steelers. A high hanging kick and Antoine Randall back pedaling near the 13 yard line on a Zastadil punt of 34 yards. So Deshae Townsend with his first sack of the season. The Pittsburgh will get it back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by T-Mobile. Get more minutes, more features, more service. And by Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL and Super Bowl 39. 
Baltimore just punted and, of course, opened the game. It was a Jamal Lewis touchdown run of three yards. As you take a look at Shea Townsend, we had the sack, which stopped Baltimore in their tracks. And back to the 12-yard line, first and 10 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, that sack put Baltimore in an impossible position. That was an excellent call by Dick LeBeau. There was no one could have possibly blocked Deshae Townsend. Two tight ends, Staley in the backfield. First down and 10 yards to go, and Maddox, without a lot of breathing space, is chased on the play by Kimoyatu and gets it off to his tight end, Reboots, huh? He makes the grab at the 21 and gets nine on the play. Tuesday on the Amazing Race, just four teams remain. Who will win a million dollars? Don't miss the two-hour season finale of the Amazing Race at a special time Tuesday, 9, 8 Central on CBS, America's most watched network. And Reimers, the former quarterback at Michigan, picks up a first down to the 22-yard line, and Staley remains. Fake end around to Antoine Randall and there's Staley, who is brought in by Ed Hartwell after a gain of three. Staley told us last night that and he looked at about three teams, the Buccaneers, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Detroit Lions, and he thought there was just this glow around the Pittsburgh organization, so he signs for $4 million on a five-year deal. Well, it's amazing. He comes from a very stable organization, so what he's looking for is more stability. And you can't really get much more stable than the Pittsburgh Steelers. you got the coaches, coach with the longest tenure in Bill Cowher and a real class organization. Dime secondary. Haynes is in the backfield along with Staley. And on third, make it second down and seven. A gain of three on the play, and he's up to the 27-yard line. Well, there, was a, there was an old advertising slogan that used to say there's nothing says loving like something from the oven. Well, if you're looking for a stable organization, nothing says stable like a coach that, uh, if he was a professor, he'd be real tenured. Yes. Not just tenured. <laughs> Chad Williams What's past tenured? Sanders in the backfield, third down and five. Ron Haynes is back there with Maddox and set. Inside the 20-yard line and coming through is Terrell Suggs, last year's defensive NFL Rookie of the Year in a loss of eight yards. And the Steelers have got a punt for a second consecutive time as Maddox gets up very swollen. Well, how do you make a an offense not be balanced? You put them behind the sticks and you get into their heads. And right now, this Baltimore defense is in the Pittsburgh Steelers' heads. Gardaki to punt for a second time. He's never had one blocked. And here is the rookie free agent out of McNeese State, B.J. Sams, who was brought down hard by Harrison, a good-looking linebacker who can play in the diamond times. A 32-yard punt by Gardaki, a 12-yard return. The clock at 18 seconds to play in the first quarter. Monday in an all-new late show for the first time ever. Dave goes one-on-one -on -one with presidential candidate John Kerry. That's Monday right here on CBS with Randy Cross, Kevin Harlan. We're in Baltimore from the Pittsburgh 39. Baltimore after the Sam's return. First and 10. And Jamal Lewis with the flea flicker back to Bowler. Going deep and looking for Hines. What a catch! Touchdown! Flag has been thrown at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be it's going to be an illegal motion. motion. 85. Penalty. It's against Kevin Johnson. He was they had they started in stack receivers left. They brought Kevin Johnson Johnson in motion towards the sideline. And boy right now that's one of one of Brian Billick's pet peeves is is that he thinks the officials are being a little bit a little bit too specific and maybe don't have this whole thing right about the motion. I mean it's something we've seen all over the league about the fact that they're, they're judging guys going towards the line of scrimmage. That's what would make him an illegal motion. Here he comes. Yep. See him just inching that one little hop hop? Well, the hop hop equals five <laughs> yards back in the wrong direction and six points. Two tight ends with the eye first and 15 back to the Pittsburgh 44-yard line. And Jamal Lewis is brought down by Clark Higgins and and a uh, gain of four, and flag is down again as they continue to move the pile. Does the running game of the Baltimore Ravens? This is getting an almost preseason look to it. 
It is now with all these penalty <laughs> flags. flags. Kulamalu is just all over Personal the field. Personal foul, grasping the face mask, 66 on the offense, 15-yard penalty, still first down. 11 flags, Randy Cross, in that first quarter alone. Two seconds to play. And I'm sorry, that, that's not exhibition season. <laughs> that's preseason scrimmage. <laughs> So they began this drive at the 39-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and now with penalties, Baltimore pushed back to their own 41-yard line. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter of Jamal Lewis' three-yard touchdown run. On the game's opening drive has put the Ravens on top of the Steelers 7-0. We'll return to Baltimore after these messages as you're watching the NFL on CBS. We begin the second quarter with a first and 30, and Jamal Lewis is wrapped up almost at the line of scrimmage. They had Joey Porter in there throwing him for a loss of a yard near the 40-yard line. Porter's been very vocal this week about these two teams and the rivalry that popular. exists. Well, here's Aaron Smith, the defensive end. Here's Benny Anderson. Now watch Benny Anderson's right hand. He starts on the outside of Smith. The right hand goes into the side of the head, into the face mask, and then as Smith goes to his left, so does Benny Anderson's hand on the face mask. I thought that's what the official saw from the back. It was thrown by the, by the referee. Chester Taylor's in the backfield for Baltimore, second and 31. No changes defensively for the Pittsburgh Steelers as we start this second quarter. And Bowler throws to Todd Heath, who's brought down by Foote and by Higgins at about the 45 of the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's a pickup of 15 yards. So yeah, at the rate that Todd Heap and Kyle Bowler are going, they, they've got a heck of a chance to get Heap 100 catches this year after nine in the opener. And he is such a security blanket for this young quarterback. You have to be in, impressed not only by this young tight end, but, but so far by the decisions that Kyle Bowler is making. If nothing's there, he's running and pulling this thing down. What did Deion tell us? He's a wide receiver in a tight end's body. Oh, absolutely. He's a nightmare for a safety or a linebacker in a mismatch. Third and 16, Taylor is in the backfield. Five in the secondary for Pittsburgh, and a catch made Kevin Johnson. Grabbed by Copley, the rookie, at the 22-yard line. It is a first down, a pickup of 23 on third and 16, and Bowler right on the money to the veteran Johnson. Well, these Ravens fans are excited because they've got a wide receiver who wants to letter. You know, K.J. has lettered a few times with Cleveland, caught himself a lot of passes, and he's getting to where Kyle Bowler can step up and get him the ball. Bowler's been perfect on third down today, and for the game, he is 6 of 7. So he has had a great beginning and a rocky start last week in Cleveland, 22-yard line. And that's not counting his scrambles for yards, too, running. Timeout taken by Bowler. The play clock was close to running out. That's the first timeout taken by the Ravens at 12.55 in the second. After the Baltimore timeout, they've got first and 10 at the Pittsburgh 22-yard line here in the second quarter. Kyle Bowler leading this drive downfield. There's his mom clapping and his dad wearing number seven, Bob Bowler and Karen Bowler. Here from California. First and 10 from the 22. Lewis is in the game, a recard block, a Benny Anderson block, and a dive across the middle. Looked like Ferrier is the one who got him airborne, and Casey Hampton had some nice penetration on the play. It's a gain of three, second down coming up. Well, Shannon Sharp has joined our CBS team, and he's also joined the team at NFL.com. Log on and read Shannon's thoughts on the week action in the NFL, as only he can tell it. NFL.com or NFL on AOL. So far, Baltimore, 10 runs, one pass on first down. Pretty clear what they're trying to do with Jamal Lewis, establish that run. Two tight ends, including Heath and Jones. Second down, seven. Here is Jamal Lewis, running right into the teeth of that defense again. Foot was on the top of the pile, and they also had... Ulamalu, who came in with a gain of two on the play to the 17. Well, it's such a comfort zone, too, for a, for a young quarterback like Kyle Bowler to, to have the situation the way it is right now. He, he's gotten such consistent running out of Jamal Lewis and good protection from his offensive line. You know, he's got Kevin Johnson at wide receiver, Todd Heap. This is a classic red zone down the seam situation for Baltimore. Three tight ends, Taylor's in the backfield, third down and five, and here's Bowler to the end zone, way over the head of Himes. 
who was guarded on the play by Ricardo Coakley, the rookie. And it's incomplete, fourth down and five, and the Pittsburgh defense keeps the Baltimore offense out of the end zone and relegates him to a three-point try. Really, if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, the most important unit you have, besides, obviously, defense keeping them from scoring touchdowns, is your offense is so out of their, I guess, comfort zone. Right now, Pittsburgh's offense kind of looks like it did last year earlier in the season. It was struggling, throwing a lot, not running a lot. Matt Stover hit a 42-yard field goal last week in Cleveland. This will be a 35-yard attempt, and it does just sneak inside the upright. Yeah, that's right. You thank somebody. You're 2-2 two two for the season, a 35-yard boot, and Baltimore up by 3, by a 10-0 count. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Star Wars Trilogy for the first time on DVD September 21st. Subway. Living well and eating well is about making choices. We're glad we're one of them. Subway. Choose well. And by Cadillac and the all-new STS. Breakthrough. Those beautiful shots at the Inner Harbor from our affiliate here in Baltimore, WJZ. Thanks to them for showing us that. 10-0 is the score. Stover just knocked a 35-yard field goal through. Jamal Lewis has had a three-yard touchdown run. And Wade Ritchie with the ensuing kickoff. And this is Antoine Randall out inside the five-yard line for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who gets by T.J. Slaughter. And then Wade Ritchie, the man who kicks off, knocks him out of bounds inside the 35. A 30-yard return. This Wednesday, Gary Sinise and Molina. You say that name right there. <laughs> Can't crack it read Can it. Uh, star in the new drama, Don't Miss CSI New York, series premiere Wednesday at 10, 9 Central on CBS. We've got too many big names today to worry about that one. Let's go now to the 32-yard line where it's first and 10. And New Staley in the backfield. Blocked by Hines Ward on the other side. He's one of the great blocking wide receivers, and they run him up the middle where he's brought down by Hartwell after a gain of three to the 35. Key matchup in this game is at nose tackle. Kiyamatsu working right here. He's working against Hardings. Watch the nice job he does of driving upfield through Hardings' attempted block. He doesn't make the tackle, but that opens up the space backside so his linebacker can. That's a real nice play for the young nose guard. Second down and seven from the 35. Maddox fakes to Kreider, batted down, right back to Maddox, and he bats the ball away. The pressure came from Adelis Thomas. It's now third and seven. Thomas is taking the place of Dolwell. There's Adelis right there, coming from that left linebacker position. Kind of up and kind of not stopping. He just keeps coming and coming, screen or no screen. Just bad timing and very halting execution right now, right now for Pittsburgh. But you got to say one thing. A lot of their lack of execution is because this Baltimore defense is executing like you expect them to. Deion Sanders has come in with Chad Williams and another timeout taken by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Is, I don't know if there was a tough time communicating with Tommy Maddox on the field or what, but they do call a timeout. 10.46 to play in the half. Defensive coordinator Mike Nolan on the sideline for the Baltimore Ravens. First time he's been on the sideline, usually he's up in the press box. Boy, his defense, look at the job they're doing. Defense runs in the Nolan family, though. His dad was one of the best ever. It is third and seven at the 35. Four receivers. Ron Haynes in the backfield for Tommy Maddox after the Steelers took that time out of the pass. Caught by Hines Ward. Good for a first down. Great catch. 49-yard line. A pickup of 14 on third and seven. You know, on that last play, Heinz Ward was underneath, you know, at about seven yards. But when you when you get the passes thrown to the left, look what's going on above him. See above him right there? There's Burris right above him in the same area. They flooded that one zone with their two best receivers. So it is first and 10, 49-yard line. 
And a fake to Staley with the Maddox pass. Caught by Hines Ward. Got by Reed. Hit by McAllister. Inside the 20 to the 17 yard line. A 34 yard pickup. And a Pittsburgh first down. Two great catches. 14 yards before. And that reception was good for 34 yards. Hey, it's typical Hines Ward. Ward almost lulls you to sleep with that ability to be such a pest and such a great blocker and a good key short pass receiver. You forget that ability he has to get down the field. With just a single tight end, first play of the Pittsburgh, his run in Baltimore territory, 17-yard line, Staley. And hit once by Ray Lewis, then banged by Anthony Weaver. There is a flag on the far side at about the 23. motion 35 offense it leaves the climb second down that's Kreider the fullback hey, I, I watched that the whole time I didn't see anything illegal about what Kreider did he did the time before that he was hopping forward you see on every helmet today Arizona safety Pat Tillman tragically killed in Afghanistan every helmet has a number 40 today that number was retired by the Arizona Cardinals second down 11 base defense for the Baltimore Ravens there are two tight ends in for Tommy Maddox, 17-yard line. As he sets with good time, a block by Ross. That ball was deflected inside. I don't know if it was a Dallas Thomas, but someone got in there and in his face. So now it will be third down and 11. Couple extra defensive backs brought in, including Deion Sanders. You saw the excellent job in that last graphic what we showed under Mike Nolan, the coordinator, what a good job this Baltimore's defense is doing. Mainly what they're doing is they're, they're turning back the clock on Pittsburgh, but in the wrong direction. Not to the running days, but to the passing days of a couple of years ago. 18, Randall L., the third receiver, six in the secondary, the shotgun snap, Ron Haynes in the backfield. There goes Maddox, chased by Suggs, and Suggs again comes up with a big defensive play and now Maddox and Suggs go into each other's face mask and they've got to be separated. Well, that's one thing about it. As a quarterback, Tommy Maddox is the one guy if I had to pick out of all 32 quarterbacks as fiery as guys like Farvar and whatnot, he'd be right at the top of my list of QBs that take no stuff. Well, you know, there's the impression that Maddox... He will, he will throw back. Exactly. That he is not an <laughs> athletic player. He was a high school basketball All-American player, a McDonald's high school basketball All-American player. He was also drafted in Major League Baseball. We know he was a well-thought-of quarterback coming out of UCLA. I mean, this guy is is very athletic and very mean, as you can see right there into the face of Suggs. No surprise. He's got Alan Fanica there right behind him, yes. right, backing him up. <laughs> but Bill Cower... Bill Cower is working the head linesman, and we also saw Maddox out there working the officials on the sideline as well. Pistol Browning, number eight. Maddox is saying that when his arm was he said it was the number. Yeah, he's at. He's past. Down. He's outside of the outside of the tackle box, but the ball isn't passed back to the line of scrimmage. And what Bill Cower and Tommy Maddox is saying, well, how can the ball get past the line of scrimmage if the guy's hitting my arm? Watch him go to throw it. Suggs hits his arm, right? His helmet hits his arm. Actually, not his arm hits his arm, but he throws right into the guy's helmet. Okay, here's Jeff Reed now to try a field goal of 48 yards. He had the game winner. And last week's Oakland win for Pittsburgh from 42. This is the Rod Serling zone for Jeff Reed. Yes, this is. is the outer limits. Holding is Gardaki. Mike Schneck with the snap. The wind is swirling almost a crosswind from the far to the near side. And this one cutting into the wind and wide right. So it all starts with a snap, and in this case, it starts with a snap that's a little bit inside and low to Chris Gardaki, the punter, and you're into a little breeze. You've got to hit it and drive it, and 
It gets up and doesn't drive. 9.08 in the second quarter. Now we're making a point. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Lowe's, where you'll find all your home improvement needs. Lowe's, improving home improvement. And by Hummer. Check out the H2 at Hummer.com. Hummer, like nothing else. Some nice receptions of 34 and 14 yards by Hines War put him in scoring position, but Reed misses from 48. That penalty hurt as well, so on the missed kick. First and 10, 38-yard line, Bowler with a nice bootleg and a block by the tight end Terry Jones and shoved out of bounds by Chris Hope. And Ferrier defending as well. It's a gain of four, and he scrambles to the 42-yard line. Now, on that, last, on that play, Tommy Maddox and Bill Cower and all Steeler fans are going nuts on Okay, you're outside the tackle box, for one thing. Now watch the left arm of Suggs. Is the ball out? Is he throwing? Throw, throw. I'm just, I'm not, I think that's pretty inconclusive and in a bang-bang deal. I think Walt Coleman did a pretty good job there because that ball, even if his arm doesn't get hit, get hit, I'm not sure it makes it past the line of scrimmage. 42-yard line, second and six. Jamal Lewis hit by Hagan. Gain of a yard. So you look at it from the other angle. The ball's out. Arm hits him. That's way too close. And the officials don't have slow motion. All he can go by is what he really sees. And I can see exactly what Walt Coleman thought from back there. And Bill Cower and Maddox should be a little bit uh, torqued off, if you will. But I'd be a lot madder at my protection. And I'd be a lot madder at the fact that I can't run the ball right now. And I have to get in those situations where I have to pass. Five in the secondary with Cole Clough, uh, rather with uh, Coakley back there. Third down and five. Chester Taylor gets the call. And Polamalu comes in with the nice stick. And a gain of four to the 47-yard line. They're going to have to punt a good yard, yard and a half shy of the first down. Polamalu has been in a lot of tackles this afternoon from his safety position. He's got a little uh, little hop working right there. Got a little ding on a leg, I think. He's, he's coming up so often, he's getting in the linebacker zone, and those defensive backs that he's usually one of are coming in and giving him some shots as he's making these tackles. That's Baltimore's first three and out. Zastadil is inside the 35. And Antoine Randall Ellis back inside the 20 at the other end of the field. Zastadil gets off a high hanging punt. Fair caught. At the 10-yard line by the former Indiana quarterback, Antoine Randall-L. That was a 44-yard punt. Next Saturday, the Home Depot SEC on CBS puts on the Crimson Tide against Matt Jones and the Arkansas Razorbacks. It all begins with Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman on the TIAA Crump. College football today at 3 Eastern here on CBS. And, Randy, good to see you at the call that LSU-Auburn game yesterday down in Alabama. Talking about some exciting finishes on CBS yesterday. All started about 3.30 Eastern. I think it got done, it got done about the time I got into Baltimore, about midnight. <laughs> Ten-yard line after the Baltimore punt. First down and 10. Kreider is back there in the eye. And Deuce Staley with an open space to roam. There you and go. Brought down by Reed. Woo, and it's a gain of 15 Five. yards. A flag is thrown 10 further yards down the field. It was a 16-yard run by Staley. It's going to be on Heinz Ward working against Chris McAllister, actually a little bit after the fact, planning, planning Chris McAllister on his back and putting his helmet under his chin. We've seen a lot of penalties thrown. Personal foul, grasping the face mask, 21 defense. 15-yard <laughs> penalty, first down. So what happens when you're a really good cornerback going against a Pro Bowl wide receiver who is the most aggressive blocker in the NFL. Coming through the left part of the screen, right over here, watch, here comes Hein Ward. Right here, there's the matchup. Drive, drive, drive. <laughs> There's not another receiver in this league, folks, that'll stay with a block that long and finish it. Two tight ends, first and 10, 41-yard line, and Deuce Staley. Callister can't get him with the whip, and Staley's still on his Horace and brought down by Suggs near midfield. That's a spinning run of nine yards. Another flag is thrown. Holding, 68, offense. Ten-yard penalty, still first down. That's Kedrick Vincent taking the place of the injured Kendall Simmons, her second trip to New York, and Craig Gumbel. All right, Kevin, there's only one touchdown on the board in Jacksonville, and this is it. Ernest Wilford caught the game winner last week. This is a 12-yard pass from Byron Leftwich, 7-3 Jacksonville, four and a half minutes to play in the first half. Kevin and Randy. 
And, and Greg, what about the start for the Jaguars? They're trying to go 2-0 and for the fifth time in their seven seasons. First down and 20 with the penalty back to the 31. Thank you for the update. The two tight ends remain. Jerome Bettis is in the game for the first time. He authored three one-yard touchdown runs last week, and that's a catch by Plexico Burris. The tackle made by Pro Bowler McAllister. It's a gain of nine on the play to the 40-yard line. And speaking of Greg Gumbel and crew, the next show has time report with Greg, Dan, Shannon, and Boomer. For all the latest NFL scores and highlights coming up on the next show, halftime report from New York. Good decision there by, by the Steelers going back after McAllister right after he had that play with Heinz Ward. See how hot he is and check his concentration level. This drive began at the 10, now at the 42nd down and 11. For Maddox and Bettis remains in the game. And Maddox is nailed, brought down on the line by Marcus Douglas. A one-time rookie free agent, he picked up a yard. Back to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Kevin, this time off to Detroit, where Joey Harrington, nice little play fake here, draws everybody in. Corey Schlesinger, a wide open, one-yard touchdown, and the Lions are leading Houston by a score of 7-0. Kevin and Randy. You know, Greg, remember the Lions, 5-3 and three at home last season. They're a pretty good home team. And Mariucci in his second year, third down and 10. There are three receivers for Maddox. The ball is beyond the 40-yard line. Haynes and Staley in the backfield. Six in the secondary for Baltimore, and that is caught by Randall L., who corkscrews his way for a first down to the 49-yard line, a pickup of 11 on third and 10 and into Raven territory. Well, talk about keeping your head about you. Tommy Maddox in that pocket drops back, and he's got some stuff buzzing around him. Still steps up. Watch the hit. Randall L. Puts, gets right here as he gets up. Bang! That, that missile coming in at the end, the white one you saw, that was Ray Lewis. They're going to challenge. The challenge flag is on the field and has just been thrown. They're going to make sure that... I think they're, they're challenging the spot. Right. That Randall L. had been touched. Because he, he just got, got the first... Exactly. Then he got up and ran past exactly. the stick. Exactly. Good point. Second team timeout. Baltimore. Well, they threw there the is red, no challenge. Well, they there threw no the challenge. red challenge flag on the field, but they picked it up. And they're calling another timeout on the Baltimore Ravens. Tell you, Brian, Brian Billick is, is absolutely livid. See, he catches it. Has it been touched? He's touched there, but he's up running again. That's a nice job by Ray Lewis of finishing that play off because everybody else was standing around watching. Now they're going to challenge. They throw the red flag back out there again. So now the question is, what happens to that timeout? Is it a timeout, or are we going to revert to a challenge? On this drive and catch. The drive began back at the 10-yard line. Baltimore is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed kick. So while Walt Coleman does that, we'll take a break with 4.49 to play in the first half. Concentrate on the left hip here of Marvell Smith in that area of the field. Watch as the ball clears his hip for the catch. Ball's wobbling, it's down. See it bounce on the ground right there? That's on the ground, then it comes up into his hands from a different angle. It's out, it's moving, it hits the ground, then there's possession. The, ball, the, the ground bounced that ball back up into Randall L's hands. Kind of, kind of tough to take a smack like that from Ray Lewis after the fact and have him challenge it and come back and it didn't really happen. It was on third down and 10, so if that is not ruled a catch, then obviously Pittsburgh has got a punt. See, right off that hip of Marvell Smith, you see the ball come in. Yes. You see it bounce up into the body of Randall L. See, that, from, that from is that a other, point of emphasis this year on receptions with officiating crews. It really has been the last couple of years. Right. The whole fact of once you have to have grasp and control, and, and grasp and control doesn't say motion. You see that ball moving and bouncing, that is not control. The 
It might have taken a little while, but it's a nice challenge, I think, by the Baltimore Ravens because yeah, it should go do. in their, their favor. Well, remember, they threw down the flag, then they picked it up and called a timeout, then they yeah. re threw the yeah. flag. And, yeah. and then so Brian, the Brian Billick was having they, filet of somebody the play, if they win the, the challenge. Ball hit the ground, the pass is incomplete. So it was a good challenge. Will not be charged a timeout for the replay review, but will be charged a timeout for the timeout during the game. Yeah, total reviews 24 last week in the Pittsburgh Oakland game. North Turner used three, all three. He was successful on one, got the third. He used all three in the third quarter, or first, uh, first quarter of the game. Gardaki to punt, so a big challenge victory by Baltimore. And there you see Deion Sanders back there with B.J. Sims. Two and, of them. Yeah, that's right. Sims and Sanders both inside the 20-yard line. And both were returning punts last week. Deion returned one for five yards in Cleveland. Reed coming close on Gardaki. And this is Deion back at the 12-yard line. Gets by a cushion and finally finds a little bit of a crack and brought down by Baron Haynes, a 23-yard return. Dion's helmet's off. Well, I guess Dion took off his helmet. And there's a player down for the you, you, Pittsburgh Steelers. There's a flag down, and the helmet is off. You used to be able to do that. Yeah, back when you played. <laughs> a sportsmanlike conduct, 37 on the return team, took off his helmet, 15-yard penalty. First down. Sometimes deja vu is what you wow. used to be able to do. Well, what, what Dion's always been good at is punt returns, is looking, and once he makes his choice, see you later. Any good punt returner can make the first or second guy miss, and he made the first guy miss easy and had a flashback to the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> the retro Dion. Coach Bowden never said I couldn't do that at FSU. So the ball would have been up by the 40, and instead they're back by the 20. And the Steeler down has still not been identified yet. I thought I saw a nine and thought it might have been Lee Mays. Let's see. Nope, it is uh, Iwoma. Shidi Iwoma, number 29, who is a terrific special teams player. So as they had as they attend to him, we will take a break with 5.04 to play in the half. We're back here. Ball was still down on the ground, and it was actually kind of a, a deal that happened on special teams so often is, is you get hit by your own guy. Everybody's trying to, to cover and get after the guy that has the ball. Concentrate on this side of the screen right here. Right there, Brent, Brent Kiesel comes in and just just sideswipes him. Never sees it coming, right in the left side. Not quite as severe, but you think of the hit that Warren Sapp put on Chad Clifton, the Green Bay left tackle, and, and knocked Clifton out of the game and out of the season. And yeah, it, it, I, I tell you, it was I, not quite as ferocious as that hit. Well, how about the hit last, last week that the uh, Philadelphia Eagles put on Eli Manning in that fourth quarter when right. they finally put him in the game. But it just doesn't matter. Sometimes it's just a matter of you, you falling the right way and hitting your head on the, on the ground as you go down. It's, right. uh, it's kind of like boxing. Well, how about last night? How many years do boxers train and train and train medicine balls, body punches? Can't let a body punch beat you. When was the last time you saw a former world champion get KO'd by a body punch? Oscar De La Hoya losing to Bernard Hopkins. And they take off with all the precautions there are in the NFL. Woma is going to be x-rayed and looked at in the locker room. And as soon as we hear anything, we will pass it on to you. And mm -hmm. Bill Coward talked specifically about this kid to us on Friday about what he means to the special teams. You talk, you talk about body punches, too, in a, in a football analogy sense. It's something that... Baltimore specializes in when their defense is playing the way that they're playing today and their running games really going good They're they're a football version of a all-day body punch. There are two tight ends first and ten from the 20 and Jamal Lewis he Is brought down by Joey Porter among many there was very little gain if any on the play second down and ten yards to go Porter was saying there is pure hatred in these 
two teams toward the other. Now, see, I'll buy that. I'll buy they don't like each other. <laughs> but, but you're talking but it, rivalry? But it's not a rivalry. Yeah. You know, I don't care what anybody says. It's not a rivalry. You know, when you when you pick on somebody and you win, heck, they're, they're six and two in Baltimore and six and three at home. What's the rivalry in that? You usually win. Second down, ten from the twenty yard line, and bowler out to Jamal Lewis. Polamalu came through with another big pick, and uh, Troy Polamalu, who is a first round pick out of USC last year, throws him for a loss in the play of three, and they push him back to the seventeen yard line. What I was talking about. I mean, it's just, it kind of baffles me. I keep reading about it, and I, I've actually heard it referred to as one of the classic rivalries in the NFL. It's like, please, <laughs> let's, let's not get the hyperbole way ahead of the old, or in front of the old horse, okay? Coakley has come in with another defensive back in the secondary for Pittsburgh, third and 13. Chester Taylor is in the backfield with Terry Jones, the tight end, and Bowler with Higgins on his. Tail has to get out to the 30-yard line and is down with a Townsend Polamalu tackle. A gain of eight. They're shy and they got to punt the ball. Second consecutive three and out for the Baltimore well, yeah, for the Baltimore Ravens as they've got Zastadil punting to. Antoine Randall almost blocked for Morin. Yeah, right. flag is down, and Randall from the 26-yard line with a couple of good blocks and works his way up the sideline and taken down. There's another flag thrown, and he's out near the 50-yard line. A 48-yard Zastadil punt and a 24-yard return by Antoine Randall L. That was thrown. That first flag was thrown right in the area they usually call holding on the, the two guys working on the gunner trying to make the, his way down the field, down at the bottom of the screen. During the kick, holding, 31 of the return team. 10-yard penalty from the spot where possession was gained. First down. So we've got 2.52 to play in the first half. Well, this field the last time the Pittsburgh Steelers had it, and yeah. uh, they're trying to get something on the board being shut out right now. Remember the balance we talked about at the beginning of the game? What is the, the balance going on for this football team right now? There is no balance for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has to get back to the balance. It's only 10 nothing. Don't get out of control and just start chunking. Board in motion. The handoff goes to Staley. And Deuce Staley, who was brought down by Hartwell and a host of other Ravens, picks up four yards on the play. And they mark him just beyond the 20 yard line. Coming up in the next Hill Halftime Report, Greg, Dan, Shannon, and Boomer have all the latest NFL scores and highlights. It's the next Hill Halftime Report next from New York. With a look at Jerome Dennis on the sideline. As successful as that Baltimore Ravens defense has been on stopping Deuce Staley in the run. I'll go back to the middle of the middle of the line and Kimo Atu in there for Kelly Gregg doing a nice job of taking away the cutback in the middle run. Second down and seven. And Staley hit. That was Marcus Douglas in the middle. And no gain on the play is the Baltimore defense is shutting out the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's some nice moves and a timeout taken by Baldwin. One timeout remaining for Baltimore. Third and final team timeout. Baltimore. The timeout was called at 2.05. Now we're told one, no, no timeouts remaining for Baltimore. But they will get the two minute warning, so that's an extra one. So they called it just before the clock could reach two. Anytime you see Brian Billick's defense being this effective, especially linebackers, how often are you calling Ray Lewis, Ed Hartwell, Terrell Suggs? I mean, it's linebacker, 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 Adelius Thomas, 
It's all about these defensive linemen. There's only three of them. The nose guard position, they always talk about Kelly Gregg eating up blockers. I say Kiamatu is doing a wonderful job at nose at nose tackle right now of controlling that inside of the run. And what about the Pittsburgh side? Palomalu, who has just done a great job today coming up from the safety, and he continues to make some noise from that position in the secondary for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, what they've done is they've recreated the game plan from last week that Cleveland had with the 4-4 defense, except they've got a safety as their fourth linebacker who has the ability to run down the field in coverage. Dion is in, three receivers, including Antoine randall L, third and seven. They've got to get to the 27. And Maddox moving up and going deep down the side, working on Deion Sanders, and they were going for Plexico Burris. No yellow on the field. It is incomplete. And Sanders was stride for stride with the young Michigan State wide receiver. Was it my lion eyes, or did Deion get away with maybe getting there a little bit early with the arms? There's the match up top of the screen right there. Check out the very end. The ball's coming. He's reaching. And this is the two-minute warning with 1.59 to play. After the incompletion, as Maddox was working on Deion Sanders and a miss to Plexico Burris, fourth down and the punt by Chris Gardaki. B.J. Sams is back as he crosses midfield and finds a gap, and the rookie free agent on the way, and down he goes. With a nice tackle on the play by the Steelers. And Mike Logan, a 35-yard punt, a 33-yard return, the best of his young career. This is exactly what the young returner did not do last week in Cleveland. He was hesitant. He didn't blast it up the field. Sure, he could have used a little blocking, but sometimes being a returner isn't about the blocking. It's just about having the guts to catch it and run as straight up field as you can. Everything in your mind tells you not to do that. You know, would you go running as fast as you can towards 10 guys running as hard as they can at you? Not if they guys like you. <laughs> stay away well, you'd, from you'd make like me you. miss. <laughs> Chester Taylor is in the backfield. It is first and 10 from the 22-yard line of Pittsburgh, and Taylor gets the call. Dancing his way, picking and poking, and now driving defenders back to the 10-yard lines. Palomalu makes the tackle in the secondary. It's a gain 11 on the play, and Deion Sanders moments ago leaving the field. Well. Now Sanders is back out there. Well, this drive right here is just about getting some points and running the ball. Taylor remains first and 10 at the 11-yard line with Kevin Johnson in motion, and Taylor brought down in the middle by Ferrier, the ex-New York Jet gain of a yard about the 10-yard line. Baltimore has no timeouts remaining. Yep. And they spike it. Still, try, still trying to figure out why they blew that one at, at 2.05 on the timeout, and there's... Todd Heap. And he's a bit. We do have word, by the way, on Chidi Iwoma, who has an abdominal injury for the Pittsburgh Steelers, will not return. Probably will not return. That gives you, gives you an update on him. So, you know, this was two plays ago that Todd Heap, I think, got hurt. Check out this left ankle. Ferrier, when James he made the tackle. Ferrier comes in from the inside on the right ankle. And then Joey Porter, as he's, he's just trying to get in some kind of a stance drills him coming off the ball, but it was really Ferrier landing on that right ankle, That's that lower leg right ankle. That's your two-time Pro Bowl tight end who is down there in a heap, and they will bring in the reserve tight end, Dan Wilcox, who got a couple passes last week. He was one of the bigger surprises in Baltimore camp. So it'll be third and nine when we resume. Again, it's the right ankle, but watch out from this direction right here. You're going to see Ferrier come. Barrier 51 onto the right leg and ankle. His shoulder just planted right above the ankle on, on Todd Heap.
Coakley as they take off Heap. Well, I'll tell you, for, for a football team, that he is their best receiver. Tight end, receiver, wide receiver, receiver, running back, receiver, whatever. Anybody that's eligible to catch, that's their best guy. And they've had a problem in these first, this first game, the last game at least, of getting a wide receiver to step up. And you got a pro bowler who's good for 65, 70, 75 catches a game. I mean, a, a year. You can't afford to lose a guy like that. There was a spike on that second down, so it is third down and nine as they continue to look at Heap, and this is a major story. Wilcox taking his place, Taylor in the backfield. The rookie, Coakley, is the fifth defensive back for the Steelers. Third down and nine. And Bowler slides as he is met with the hit of Ferrier at the nine-yard line. And the Pittsburgh defense keeps him out. And relegates him to a three-point try. Gain of a yard on the scramble by Bowler. I mean, the clock's running, but there's no need to hurry if you're Baltimore. Take your time. Don't risk a penalty. If you're the holder. Don't ask for the ball until you see everybody's ready. 27-yard try by Stover. And he nails it. Stover kicked a 35-yard field goal earlier in the game. Now, remember, this was all set up on the 33-yard punt return by B.J. Sams, who began this drive for the Ravens at the 22-yard line. Why do you kick that so fast? Yeah. Why don't you let the clock run down? It's 19 seconds left. Okay, here's our NFL.com poll. Which quarterback wide receiver duo is the best in the NFL? Vote at NFL.com. Now the clock at 19 seconds. So you go to NFL.com. Yep. Type that in, and yeah. that's where you do your voting. That's huh? where you do your vote. Well, Brian Billick's doing a little voting right now in the ear of the officials. I tell you, Bill Cower and his coaching staff got some serious work to do at halftime because a 13 nothing lead for the Baltimore Ravens almost turns into like a 21 nothing lead for what you're going to have to do against this defense. And Deuce Staley. And his offensive line better figure out a way to get the running game going so you can involve receivers like Heinz Ward and Plexico Burris. Because right now the Baltimore Ravens is our uh, Baltimore Ravens are smiling and dialing on defense and, and stuff in Pittsburgh pretty good. Wade Ritchie sets to kick off for the Baltimore Ravens. And deep back they've got Coakley along with Antoine Randall L. Coakley, an interesting story is at the top of your screen there. He was a highly recruited high school kid out of Texas. His grades weren't all that good. He also played some high school football in South Carolina. Then he got into Scullin, which is a small school in Tennessee, and the kick is picked up by the aforementioned Copeland, who is grabbed by Cornell Brown and brought down at the 35-yard line. The clock will stop at 12 seconds to play in the half. We got 12 seconds. yard return. We got 12 seconds and two timeouts. We got the ball near the 35-yard line. I mean, it's worth taking some shots if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers. Remember that, that head coach theme we had kind of going into the season, Kevin, when we talked about this point of emphasis, emphasis defensively, that they were going to be much more uh, diligent on the bumps down the field. You've got the trips coming here to the bottom of the screen. Why not just chunk it down there and hope for a penalty? They have six in the secondary, but no Deion Sanders, so it's first and ten, 34-yard line. Here comes Maddox, and he throws incomplete shy of Lee Mays, who is crossing at the 40-yard line. I don't know where Dion is. He did leave the field. We saw him then, but he is not out there now. They've got Raymond Walls out there, McAllister, Reed, Demps, Walls, Williams, and Baxter, but no Dion. Second down yeah. 10. Dion's last play was that excellent, excellent play he made on Plexico Burris down the field. Right. From the 34, four receivers. And the handoff to Baron Haynes, who is grabbed by Ray Lewis, but does pick up a first down, getting 12, and that takes us to halftime. We are told as we are now getting an update from the sideline of the Baltimore Ravens, they are taking a look at the hamstring of Deion Sanders. A look at Deuce Staley. A three-yard touchdown run by Jamal Lewis. 
A couple of Baltimore field goals and a Baltimore defense shutout on Pittsburgh. After this message, we'll take you to New York for the next Tell Halftime Report. You're watching the NFL on CBS. couple of Stover field goals, and Baltimore's on top with the Jamal Lewis touchdown run, 13-0. Not many plays by the Steelers run in Baltimore territory. Well, you look at the stats. I mean, Tommy Maddox is really struggling passing the ball. He's 4 of 12. They've got to get, obviously, their passing game going. But 22 total plays? Are you I mean, at that rate, you're, you're begging for a, a 30 to nothing football game. You've got to set a tempo, establish something against this defense. You're averaging four yards a crack rushing the ball. But you're not getting very many cracks. I mean, Staley's got eight rushes. The team only has ten. See, the, the big question coming out of this game for me right now is twofold for Baltimore. It's an injury situation. How is Todd Heap? How's that leg? How bad is Deion Sanders' hamstring? From a Pittsburgh standpoint, it's very, very simple. You talk about being a physical team. You talk about being a dominant team. You talk about how physical this matchup is. Well, right now, it's a one-way physical matchup. And it's all in the favor of the Baltimore Ravens, specifically their defense. Well, for Brian Billick, he has his star tight end out with a right ankle injury. He will not return. X-rays being taken on that ankle. And Deion Sanders has a hamstring they are looking at. We begin the second half with Coakley and Antoine Randall L. Back deep and Randall L. dropping it. And then reels it back in and then is brought down on the play by Cornell Brown near the 14-yard line, a 12-yard return. And if you're trying to get something going against this Raven defense, trying to see how far backed up you can get in your own territory in the way you want to start it. You know, because Baltimore's defense in these situations doesn't do anything unusual except for the fact that, that, that they have a killer instinct. They know how to fit, finish off football teams. Steelers come out with Staley in the backfield. And they've got the single tight end with two wide. From the 14, first down and 10 yards to go with Staley. And James to brought down Hartwell and Lewis make the tackle at about the 21-yard line, gain of seven. Kevin, if I'm pissed for right now, half the seats in this in the stadium are empty. If you look around this stadium, all you see is empty seats almost. Their noise will not be a factor right now. If you're doing something that, that necessitates audibles, if you want something that isn't going to be infected or might be affected by play calling, by crowd noise, do it now. you got the chance. There aren't that many people here. Dime defense. Walls is in for Sanders. Three receivers, including Antoine Randall. L. Haynes in the backfield. It's second down, long three from the 21. Lewis makes the tackle on Haynes. It's a gain of one to the 22. We are getting word from the Baltimore locker room that the x-rays on Todd Heap's right ankle are negative, but he will not return the rest of the afternoon. That's not always definitive. Well, I'll tell you, from the looks of that injury, he'll be, in, he'll be in ice for a considerable length of time. Four receivers. They brought in Mays with Randall L. Third down and two. From the 22, the pitch out to Haynes. Runs into Hardings and is brought down by Williams and by Reed at the 25. Gain of four, and looks like he's picked up the first down. He has. Well, the key there really was the offensive line for Pittsburgh just got off on the ball a little bit quicker. You know, specifically, if you look in the middle of the line, and you specifically watch how slow that defensive tackle, Kumuatu, gets off. That way they can combo block. They can get a blocker on Ray Lewis. And that enables Hayes to take his time making a cut. Two tight ends, Staley back in, first down 10 from the 26, and Deuce Staley. Backed up, Hartwell again is there with a one-yard gain to the 27. See, I'm not going to hammer this to death, but if you're Pittsburgh and you want to establish something, we've talked about how they want to establish themselves in this game, you're going to get a chance to do something on the road you don't often get to do. You don't have to take the crowd out of this game right now because the crowd isn't at this game right now. Very light on crowd noise. You got a chance to establish yourself. Do it now. Don't waste this chance. Franklin is on the defensive line. Just came in second down nine, 27 yard one. Staley is in the backfield. Maddox loses the ball as he was packing his hand. 
And here comes Kiriatu, and the pass is incomplete. And just out of the reach of the diving Ed Reed at the 46-yard line. And for those of you that say you can't have two forward passes on the same play, <laughs> well, there was one backwards pass that never became a forward pass. You know, watch his hand. It's almost like he's loading up. He's loading. Whoops. <laughs> I think maybe they need to uh, rub those new balls down just a little bit more. You got to do something, little, right? Hey, I, you ask Boomer and Dan in the <laughs> studio. They get that shiny sheen on them. They'll slip out right out of your hands like that because Tommy Maddox isn't a guy with small hands. Maddox wants a timeout on this third and nine from the 27. And Pittsburgh burns their first in a scoreless game so far for the Steeler offense. Baltimore just uh, watched Pittsburgh call a timeout as their fans are getting revved up for a Steeler third and nine. Those, those two were revved up about 7 o'clock yes. this morning. <laughs> Tommy Maddox on third down, though, Kevin. I talked about taking advantage of this crowd noise or lack thereof. You better turn that third round of stat, stat around or you're not winning. Four receivers. They've got to get to the 36. And Maddox after the timeout. There's a flag and the ball was thrown. But I guess it's loose and Terrell Suggs picks it up and runs it back. But the arm was clearly going forward. The ball went forward. A flag is down. They mark him at the one, but let's see what they've... Tommy, Maddox, look at Maddox. Tommy Maddox is hurt. He's holding that right arm. And this becomes an interesting story because the backup quarterback, Roethlisberger, the rookie from Miami of Ohio, was injured in practice this week, so much so that they had to call up a practice squad quarterback in Brian St. Pierre to be the third quarterback today. That was a third down play. Personal foul. Chop block. 44 of the offense. The fumble recovery will stand. We will penalize half the distance to the goal. First down. There is no 44 on offense for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Must have been 34. They watch the hand. The ball must be moving forward. I got to tell you, that is perfect timing from the backside. Perfect timing by Gary Baxter. Watch Gary Baxter, watch the hand in the ball. Back, back, never moves forward. Perfect chop by Gary Baxter. Heads up play by Terrell Suggs picking that up. And I think, I think Tommy Maddox has an issue with that right arm. That had to hurt that elbow. Game's first turnover and at the one yard line, it'll be first and goal for the Baltimore Ravens. You can, you can Pittsburgh challenging the running on the field. Of a fumble. I think the best case scenario here on a challenge for Bill Cower, it gives your quarterback more time to get over that hit, but he's not going to get the ball. 12 02 in the third. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 39. Nextel. Nextel helps groups get things done. Nextel. Done. And by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. So this is the play that was being challenged by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Fumble or was his arm going After forward with the, the play, ball? The ball's knocked out of the quarterback's hands prior to the ball going forward. It is a fumble. First and ten for Baltimore. Pittsburgh will be charged for the second timeout. I tell you, that, that look there and the follow through, it was a fumble, but that look at his right arm wobbling afterwards, I'd be very concerned. See, now watch, not so much, it was a fumble. Let's get over that. Now freeze it here. Now look at the right arm of Tommy Maddox as it moves forward and the stress and the strain and the wobble on his arm. See, he's holding the hand Baxter is. And it wobbling all that strain, just like a pitcher, all that strain is going straight into the right elbow of Tommy Maddox. Two tight ends. Remember, Heap is not in there, but Wilcox takes his place. Lewis in the backfield, first and goal with an easy touchdown. His second touchdown run today. Kevin, you remember coming into the game last week in Cleveland, what you expected the Ravens to look like? That's the Ravens team that showed up today. Edwin Mulatalo comes all the way around from his left guard position and leads Jamal Lewis into the hole. 
And that's a big old lead for Jamal Lewis to get. I mean, the best hit he got on that play was from his own guy. Lewis today, 16 carries and 45 yards and two touchdowns. And Stover with the extra point. The Baltimore defense is throwing a shutout. And Jamal Lewis and the offense doing their part. His second touchdown run, 11.59 to play in the third. Jamal Lewis with two touchdown runs, a couple of field goals, and Baltimore shutting out the Pittsburgh Steelers. But there's more to this story than just the score. Is the kickoff from Wade Ritchie goes to the rookie Copley at about the two-yard line, and he takes it up before he is brought down by T.J. Swatter near the 20-yard line, an 18-yard return, and there is a new quarterback, and he is the rookie out of Miami of Ohio, Ben Roethlisberger. We're being told that Tommy Maddox has a right elbow injury and his return is questionable. And here is that injury once again. Not the ball. Watch Baxter hold on to the hand, the wobble, the follow through. If that was a pitcher, I, uh, first pitcher comes to mind in my head is Tommy John. It's Roethlisberger who hurt his knee in practice this week. First and 10 handoff to Deuce Staley. Who goes by Ray Lewis, the tackle made by Ed Hartwell at about the 27-yard line. It's a gain of eight yards on the play. There could be a lot of Staley with the new rookie quarterback taking his first NFL snap. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. That's what they needed to do anyway. You ran 22 plays in the first half. You established nothing. We came into this game knowing Deuce Staley could run the ball. We have to see if, as well as running the ball, they're dedicated enough to keep at it and complement it with the passing game. Second down, long one from the 27. Staley again. This is something that he was not doing he thought enough of in Philadelphia. He picks up three and gets the first down. Remember, he was in that that uh, running back by committee with Carell Buckholder and Brian Westbrook. Now, Buckholder is out, and Westbrook is there by himself. But Staley felt that he did not know his role, and so he went free agency, signed a $14 million five-year deal with a $4 million bonus with the Steelers. Well, that's giving up a what, what mo a lot of people think is a shot at a Super Bowl ring in Philadelphia for sure for the role as the guy on a team like the Steelers. I think it's a pretty good trade, personally. 31-yard line, first and 10, and Staley again. Blocked by Tuman, not much right there, a loss of a yard on the play. It'll be second down and wrapped up by Hartwell. And Cornell Brown. Monday on CBS, it's a season premiere so intense. One CSI investigator won't survive at CSI Miami. Monday at 10, 9 central on CBS, America's most watched network. He probably made that last play successful was Aubrey Franklin, the backup defensive end, right. driving right straight up the field, playing the game on the Steelers' side of the ball. Taking the place of the injured Kelly Gregg. Second down 11 back at the 30. And the end around to Antoine Randall L. Nothing there, read beautifully by Real Demps, a former rookie free agent who now starts in the secondary, and it's a loss of a yard. Maybe it, make it a gain of a yard now at the spot at the 31. You know, one thing you really want is you want the people that matter to react when you do a fake like that. And the people that matter are right here. You want them going that way. Watch the lack of reaction. Maybe a step or two, but bang, coming right on side. That doomed that play from the store. It was the reaction inside or lack of it by the linebackers for Baltimore. Six in the secondary with no Sanders. Third down and ten. The handoff goes to Veron Haynes. And he is out to the 38-yard line. Gain of eight, but they're shy of the first down, so Pittsburgh has got a punt. Interesting situation. We talked about Mike Nolan being on the sideline, kind of getting the game feel from the sideline, the def defensive coordinator of the Baltimore Ravens. He knows he's got a rookie quarterback. And he knows that Pittsburgh knows that he's going to blitz a rookie quarterback. <laughs> but they haven't. They're just sitting there running yet. a real base defense. Well, not yet. Why should they? If all they're going to do is run, they play you the base defense they're so good at. Gardaki the punt, and B.J. Sams had a nice return earlier in the game from the 15-yard line. Hit by Mike Logan and brought down at about the 23. A 46-yard yard, 46 yard punt of uh, Gardaki. Nine-yard return. A look at Mike Nolan.
That's a happy baby. His Ravens are on top. And After the punt, 24-yard line, first and 10 for Baltimore. Kevin, they're about to go into sumo mode. <laughs> Nothing finesse. They're just going to come out and just blob them. On first and 10, here is Bowler with the wobbly pass. Himes couldn't get it. The coverage by Hope in the secondary. It'll be second down and 10. They should have fair caught that. <laughs> That's right. There's a good argument to run the ball. <laughs> well, Thursday on CBS, critics call the new Survivor a triumph. Don't miss a minute of Survivor. Vanuatu, Thursday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. You, you wondered why that thing was kind of a high wobbler? Well, it's not a good idea to step through when you got this coming. That's Casey Hampton, the big nose tackle, coming in low. Of course, at his height, Casey can't help but come in low. It is low. <laughs> Second down and ten. Jamal Lewis, Timo von Olhofer. Among many in there to make the stop. And they push him back uh, for about a two-yard loss. Also in there was Foot, Larry Foot. So the other reason, you try that pass down the field and, and you talk about running the ball, Pittsburgh's a smart group. You know, Dick LeBeau is a very, very good defensive coach. There's no Todd Heath. The injury situation with Travis Taylor is not in this ball game. They're down to basically their last three linebackers, their last three wide receivers. There's Dick LeBeau right there. You know, why worry about the pass with no Todd Heap around now? Just come after the run. Third and 13. Chester Taylor is in the game, and Taylor makes a run for about a yard, perhaps two, and he is brought down by Joey Porter, and Baltimore will have to punt. You know, you, you've got to run the ball. You've got no Travis Taylor was deactivated. DeVar Darling, another backup receiver, was deactivated. So your receivers are Kevin Johnson, Randy Himes, and Clarence Moore. And now and now you have no Todd Heap. And Deion Sanders took reps in practice as a wide receiver. Right. I mean, put in the wishbone. <laughs> Moray is offside. There go the flags. They'll stop that in mid-motion. On the punt by Dave Zastadil. And a little mentoring on the sideline for the young quarterback, Bowler, who today... Neutral zone infraction, 81, defense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. There's Moray, the uh, fourth penalty. Dion is being iced in the locker room, we're told right now. Well, I would ice the gunners on the outside for Baltimore right here. If I'm Pittsburgh... I mug these two guys on the outside. Top of the screen, bottom of the screen. Mug these guys and let Randall L return this one. You need a spark bad. Finishing up on bowlers. Six of ten today with uh, no uh, interceptions and no touchdown passes. A bad snap from Maesi and Zastadil. Watch it go out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. That's a 32-yard punt by Dave Zastadil. Rookie getting some instruction himself on the other sideline. And a timeout, 6.45 to play in the third. And Baltimore just sent it the other way. Here's Pittsburgh, best beginning field position, 41-yard line. Well, Ben, it's time to get on solid foods. No more baby time, no more run all the time. you got to throw a pass, and they're going to come get you. Maddox injured his elbow. Roethlisberger, who was injured in practice this week, here's his first NFL pass. And it's incomplete for a lunging plexico burles coverage by Reed, second down and ten. Well, of this key game, injuries today. This game's been about being physical. This game's been about the Baltimore defense. But, you know, you saw Tommy Maddox and, and, and that torque on his arm, Todd Heap, the lower right ankle area. And then Deion Sanders was the leader of the pack in this whole thing, making this play against plexico Burris right at the very end. Never really came up limping. Must have got himself a little twinge in that hamstring. Third receiver is Antoine Randall. 41-yard line, second down and 10. Staley is in the backfield in the second pass by Roethlisberger. And throws intercepted on the play and picked off. And grabbed by Adelis Thomas. It is the second turnover by the Pittsburgh Steelers this afternoon. They had brought Heinz Ward in motion. They're trying to dump him right but over the linebackers in front of the defensive back. Problem is you got a 
linebacker into Dallas Thompson is a little bit out of the out of the loop. Here's here's Heinz Ward coming across the field. Look at Dallas. You know, at his height, that's a lot more linebacker to try to dump it over. There's Heinz Ward, and he's going to be coming right over here. But here comes a Dallas. He's clear. He's open. Too flat. Not enough lob. 46 of Pittsburgh and Bowler on first and 10. Outside, and that pass is caught by Himes, 39 yard line. The coverage across the way by Scott, gain of seven yards. So there's Adelis Thomas who's taking the place of the injured Peter Bowler. Won't be back until midseason. He has some offseason surgery. There's Roethlisberger. There was his first NFL pick in his first two passes of his career. Second down and three from the 39. Jamal Lewis. And not much there. Lewis today is carried 17 times and gained 43 yards. But Jamal Lewis and the running backs for the Baltimore Ravens had best get plenty of liquids and lots of oxygen on the sidelines. Because with Heap out, in the situation at the wide receiver position, you're, you're looking at a, a true pounded out situation. Take all the air out of the ball and time off the clock. B.J. Sands has come in as a slot receiver. They've emptied the backfield third and three from the Pittsburgh 39. That's Jones, the tight end, in motion. And Bowler hit and brought down by Aaron Smith on that defensive line. That is the second Pittsburgh sack today, the second sack of the season for Aaron Smith. And the Baltimore Ravens have got a punt. Aaron Smith coming from the top position, defensive end. He just comes right around on that game and, and just blitzes right through. So Baltimore cannot cash in on the interception of Roethlisberger in pretty good beginning field position. So Antoine... Randall L goes back inside the 15-yard line and is asked to build a punt again. It's fifth today. Pittsburgh second half, fumble, punt, interception. The fumble was by Maddox as his arm was cocked, and that's the play he was hurt on. And Antoine Randall L watches this sail over his head and into the end zone for a touchback to the 20-yard line, and that's when... The Steelers will take over 41-yard punt. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Kevin, we'll take you to Tennessee where Chris Brown, 100 yards in the first half last week, 134 on the day so far. 17 here to the one. McNair scored from there. It's a 17 to 10 Tennessee lead on the Colts. Kevin and Randy, back to you. All right, thank you. You know, Tennessee, Randy has won six of the last nine against Indianapolis. Maybe a little something to what those offensive linemen were saying in Tennessee about the holes being there, but Eddie George couldn't get to them. Right. Same holes, different back, big yeah, difference. But no Zach Killer out for the season on that offensive line for Tennessee. First and ten. At the 20-yard line on the touchback, it's a handoff to Deuce Staley. He's brought down by Albreo Franklin on the line. Gain of five. Another update from New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Kevin, this time we'll take you to Detroit. Houston crept to within four, 14 to 10, but on the ensuing kickoff, Eddie Drummond right up the middle, break it to the near side, 99 yards on the return, and Detroit looking to go 2-0 and on the year, has a 21 to 16 lead as the Texans have now put a touchdown on the board. Yeah, they beat Chicago last week in Chicago by four. You should get extra points if you go that far and nobody touches you. <laughs> Second down and five. From the 25 for the rookie Roethlisberger. He threw an interception the last time to the air and swings one this time for his first NFL completion. The pucks a goal for us who makes the catch at the 47. Whipped around by Reed and Thomas. It's a gain of 22 and a first down. Well, there's a situation right here. If you're Bill Cowher and the Steelers, you have to hope your veteran receivers, and you have some good ones, in Heinz Ward and Plexico Burris, can help settle the young quarterback a little bit. And I know, I know Ben's a pretty cool guy, but boy, can these receivers really make a big difference in building up the confidence of this young quarterback. A couple of tight ends, and Staley on first down and 10. Back by Franklin, and then hit by Cornell Brown at about the 45-yard line, a loss of the yard. Second down 11. 
You know, obviously an entire unit can't lick their proverbial chops, but you know in this situation that, that Ray Lewis and his defense have just got to be sitting here just grinning. I mean, this is their style of football. This is, this is let's run it at you. We're going to try to reestablish this game. We've got a young guy. We're, we're not going to try to expose too much to blitz. We'll try to get our first downs the old-fashioned way. Antoine Randall Ellis in, six in the secondary for Baltimore, second down 11. Veron Haynes in the backfield with the call. And is stood up and brought down by Chad Williams, who plays that hybrid safety and linebacker position in that dime. It's a gain of a yard. Well, tonight on 60 Minutes, Bill Belichick of the New England Patriots and John Fox of the Carolina Panthers got their team to the Super Bowl a year ago. How did they do it? We'll find out tonight on 60 Minutes. Now at the 47-yard line, third down and a long nine. Mays becomes the fourth wideout. Six still in the secondary. They got to get to the 44-yard line of Baltimore. Roethlisberger, here comes Suggs, and the pass is caught by Haynes, and a tackle by Ray Lewis, six yards shy of the first down, it's a gain of two, and Pittsburgh's got a punt again. Well, we know one thing for positive, the young quarterback out of Miami, Ohio, Ben Roethlisberger, has that, that quarterback sixth sense, when you can, you can sense people coming behind you, because it looked like Terrell Suggs was just going to have him zeroed in. And he just felt it and scrambled. They're not going to punt. They've got their Palomalu, who is in the backfield, now shifting to punt formation. And putting Gardaki back to punt the ball. It looked like for a second there, like uh, Palomalu was going to take it himself on a direct snap. And they'll get a delay of game. Well, it's kind of an interesting deal because Baltimore was in safe. I mean, you say a defense is in safe, that means they're not on the return team. It's the start, it's the regular defense still on the field. Delay, offense, five yard penalty, still fourth down. And we'll get another look at B.J. Sams, who is back at about the 25 yard line. He had a nice 33 yard punt return earlier. Remember, he was taking the place of Lamont Brightful, who had been. The return man here for a couple years in Baltimore, but Bill, uh, uh, we saw that the confidence leak out of Lamont Brightful's play and some fumble problems too. And, and so Brian Billick just said, I, I, "I want a different guy in there." That's why they got this rookie free agent with a nice return this afternoon already. And he runs out of bounds at about the 20, and then he is under an avalanche of black jerseys, including Sean Moray, who makes the stop on the special teams. 39-yard punt. Coming up next in game two of our doubleheader, the Browns against the Cowboys. The Bills battle the Raiders. The Jets take on the Chargers. New England and Arizona. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. I was watching the guys in the pregame show talk about that Cleveland-Dallas, and they had an awful lot of confidence in, in the Cleveland Browns team going into Dallas and beating the Cowboys. I think Boomer was the only one, I think, that in my mind talked the sense about... Uh, you know, Dallas beating that Browns team. That Browns team, I think, last week was an aberration as far as them being that good. And Dallas lost uh, up in Minnesota last week to Randy Moss and Dante Culpepper, yeah. so they opened their home schedule today, an incomplete pass for Wilcox, second down and ten. So I'm sure for Coach Parcells, it was a very pleasant week <laughs> yes. for the Cowboys. A lot of touchy-feely, maybe a little kumbaya <laughs> after practice every day. Well, Jim Nance and... and Phil Sims would be down there. I'm sure Phil Sims could tell you about some of those wonderful weeks he spent with Parcells. Two tight ends. Again, Heap is out with an ankle. X-ray is negative. So Wilcox taking his place. Second down, 10. And Jamal Lewis. And again, right into the teeth of that defense with no gain. It'll be third down. Well, all kinds of injuries today. Let's look at the one on Deion Sanders first. This was a hamstring as he was covering Plexico for his deep. And Todd Heap was rolled on his right ankle. You can see right there by Fury. He was helped off the field. The Maddox, and this is really looking painful because he completely collapsed and held onto that elbow and that arm after that hand and that motion were hindered from going forward. So far, this game is about two things. Injuries and a severe butt whipping yeah. put on Pittsburgh by Baltimore. 39 at the 21. 
And Bowler looks into the nickel defense of the Steelers. Incomplete for Kevin Johnson and the coverage on the play by the young rookie Ricardo Coakley from Tusculum. He was a second-round pick, and Coakley, and how they get that name out of that, I don't know. But they did, and he's there, and he has a nice play, and he's forced to punt. You obviously had no input. <laughs> no, we didn't. Watch the coverage. Now he's off. But look at the break. That, that breaking on the ball is one thing you always look for from a young quarterback, especially to start with that much pad to be able to make up that quick, that burst like that. Here's his ass to do a punt. And high and hanging. And Antoine Randall with about the 35-yard line. Walked down nicely by Davis Thomas, who made the Pro Bowl a season ago with plays just like that, a 43-yard punt and a four-yard return. Adelis Thomas might be the biggest man to ever play gunner on a punt team. What he can do covering, covering a punt, I've never seen another guy do that. I mean, at Lawrence Taylor, his rookie year, did that as, an, as a linebacker, as a gunner on punt teams, making big plays. Here's a starting linebacker that still gets down there on the punts like that. Roethlisberger for the injured man. It says it first and 10 from the 41-yard line. The fake to Staley who offers a block on Dimps. And, uh-oh, look out. Dimps was their third sack today, matched by the Baltimore defense. Anthony Weaver was coming in with a nice play. And they also had Kimoyatu from the defensive line. Loss of 12. Watch the bodies coming. Dimps cheating up late. Staley is able to stop him for a while. The rookie decides to turn back. Almost like he forgot what was there just a minute ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the end of the third quarter. A shutout by the Baltimore defense. A touchdown run. In fact, a couple of them by Jamal Lewis and some field goals. It's 20 to nothing as Baltimore and the Ravens hover over their first win of the season with a quarter to go. Let's take this word from our local station as you're watching the NFL on CBS. In a game with prominent injuries and two Jamal Lewis touchdown runs, 20-0 with Baltimore on top of Pittsburgh, second and 22 as we begin the fourth quarter. From the 30-yard line for Roethlisberger, one of four first-round quarterbacks picked in the recent draft, and Roethlisberger goes outside to Staley. He's got to get to the 41 and dives ahead to about the 39. The tackle made by McAllister. I'm sorry, had to get down to the 49-yard line. It's a gain of 10. Well, we started this game talking about, you know, maybe a little less arrogance and more execution from the Baltimore Ravens. And I tell you, execution all the way around. Offensively, defensively, special teams, and on the Steelers. Third and 12, 39-yard line. Ron Haynes is in the game. And Antoine Randall is the third wide receiver. Roethlisberger needing to get to the 49. On the fly, almost intercepted on the deflection, picked up by Hines Ward. A foot race with Dempsey. and Hines Ward takes it inside the five-yard line to the three. That was almost picked off by Ed Reed, Ed. ricocheted off his hands to the very alert. Hines Ward, a 58-yard pickup. Ed Reed had plans. The rookie should never have thrown that ball. He was seeing nothing but open grass and blockers in front of him, and the ball went right through his hands. And another typical Heinz Ward play. You know, he's there to pick up the scraps and to make something out of it. And now the shutout endangering so that Baltimore defense will tighten its screws. They've got a couple tight ends in there. First and goal at the three. Kreider comes in as the lead back for Staley, who got a two-man block and is banged around at about the line of scrimmage with no place to run. Sucking down and goal. Looks like Reed got in there with one of the hits. Well, this will this will have all the all the finesse of Fight Club. And if they're going to come inside and just make this a toe to toe or you're, you're doing exactly what Baltimore wants you to do. This is about the time we saw Jerome Bennis last week when they were a little bit closely at all those one-yard touchdown runs. Five carries, one yard, three touchdowns last week. Three receivers. Antoine Randall Ellis in. Staley stays in the backfield. And Roethlisberger 
second down and goal. And caught by Randall L. And it is a Pittsburgh touchdown. A three-yard strike in the young quarterback's first touchdown pass in his career. That flag is down at the seven. That two, one at the seven and one at the ten. It's something to do with the celebration, I think, after the fact. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 20 of the defense. Reed. Took off his helmet on the field. That 15-yard penalty will assess on the kickoff. We saw Touchdown. Dion. We saw Dion had a very good-looking punt return wiped away earlier in the game for the same thing, and that's that's what Brian Billick is ticked off about. Well, here's Randall L. right here. Watch the effort after the fact. When he gets the ball, quick pump, settles down. He's grabbed by Reed and just stretches into the end zone. See, Deuce is over to the side saying, you know, I was hoping, too. You could have thrown it to me. <laughs> Jeff Reed's extra point is in. And the shutout is gone for the Baltimore Ravens, and plenty of time left, 13-04, to play in the fourth. Well, not only the shutout's gone, you're feeling a little oomph for the Steelers. Can the Steelers take care of the oomph? Hines Ward had a 58-yard reception on a deflection and took it to a goal-to-go -to -go situation. Then the young rookie quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, threw his first touchdown pass, taking the place of the injured Tommy Maddox. After the interception, he's gone 5-5 five five through the air. And on the ensuing kickoff, B.J. Sims at the 10. For the Ravens, and brought down by Crewalt, one of those special teamers that Bill Cowher talks so glowingly about. Just nice execution right there by, by Randall L. and Roethlisberger. And, hey, somebody had acted like they'd actually done that before. The rookie doesn't really get too carried away celebrating. Here's Reed right here. Watch what happens after he gives up this touchdown. He's already missed an interception. Then he gives up a touchdown. In frustration, the helmet comes off. And then, oops. <laughs> That's B.J. Sams who returned that kickoff down, and we take a break. 12.58 to play. B.J. Sams walked off under his own power. The wind knocked out of him, so at the 20-yard line, first and 10 for Kyle Bowler. Six total yards of offense in the second half for the Baltimore Ravens. The fake to Lewis, who's got about 48 yards on the ground, and the little throw to Terry Jones, who's brought down nicely by free safety Chris Hope. He's replacing Brent Alexander this season. 11-yard pickup and a first down. Last year's number one new comedy is this season's biggest premiere. Charlie Sheen and John Cryer star in two and a half men with a special guest appearance by Sean Penn and Elvis Costello Monday after the season premiere of Raymond here on CBS. First down. Wilcox the tight end in place of the injured Heat. A little early imagination on that first down from Kyle Bowler in the Baltimore offense after not doing much. 31-yard line, first and 10. Nice catch by Hines, who missed all of last season with an ACL. A leaping catch, a 14-yard pickup, 45-yard line, another Baltimore first down. Well, there's a pretty good answer in two plays to the, to the Pittsburgh oomph. You know, they're getting a little momentum, got themselves a touchdown. And you complete a quick one to the backup tight end and another one to a backup wide receiver the knee went down before that hand ever hit out of bounds so that was a really really nice catch Coakley is in, in the secondary so five back there for the Steelers on first and ten it's a Jamal Lewis run Paul Amalu makes the grab a uh, two yard gain by the 2,000 yard rusher a season ago Jamal Lewis second and eight Ricard checks out I think you could probably count on one hand the number of times Polamalu has not been basically a linebacker in this, fo yeah. in this football game. He'll start maybe 10 yards off the ball, but by the time the ball snapped, he's about middle linebacker high, if not nose guard high. Here he comes. Second down and eight, and Bowler high, and it whistles over the head of the 6-4 Himes. And Bowler was hit hard. And that'll be third down and eight. Looks like Ferrier may have gotten to him coming from a linebacking position. It's Ferrier coming in. He comes in right under the right arm. That's a long shot there. Yeah, you get that hit. right arm following through. That whole side of your body is exposed. Right under your arm, there's there no pad that goes right there. No. 
third and eight. They've got Terry Jones spread out as a wide receiver. Chester Taylor's in the backfield, and he gets the call. He's got to get to the 45, and he's being chased by Palomalu, who makes the grab after a first down gallop to the 31-yard line. It's a pickup of 22 yards earlier in the game. Taylor had a nice run up 36 yards. Watch Jonathan Ogden and the torque he puts out on right here on this play. I think his knee's better. Whack. <laughs> See that torque? He just picks up Joey Porter and says, why don't you come over here with me? And that opens up that hole wide open for Taylor. First down and 10 at the 31-yard line. Lewis is back in, and Jamal with the call and gets by Higgins and gets in the secondary. Is brought in by Kiesel, who is in the game. And it's a 12-yard pickup. Brett Kiesel makes the stop. Run complements the pass, and pass complements the run, and this drives a great example. You haven't been able to run it well. Well, you get a couple of good passes, loosen up, loosens up the defense, and then your offensive line up front on that play, led by Big Zeus, Orlando Brown at right tackle, just puts a little smush on that side of the Pittsburgh's D. Two tight ends, times the wideout. It is a first down, 19-yard line of the Steelers, and Kyle Bowler to Jamal Lewis. Gets by... A failure attempt to tackle, then hope from the secondary brings hold him on, down after on. a gain of two. Kevin, did, did Casey Hampton actually get back on, on sides and not touch anybody when he jumped he like that? He's quick. He can do that. <laughs> Talk about a dancing bear. He How did he do that and not hit anybody? He's an amazing, amazing player. Well, first... I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, that is the best nose tackle in the NFL right there. I mean, in the last couple of years. See, look, he, he bounces forward, doesn't touch, doesn't touch uh, Mulatalo, the left guard, and gets back over for the ball snap. Taylor back in, 18-yard line, second down eight, and Taylor has got a career high now, 76 yards today, is brought down by Palomalu, who makes another grip. 11 tackles for Troy Palomalu from USC. He was beaten by Doug Gabriel, remember last week from the Is Oakland Raiders? Fake? Yeah. He's not gonna buy he's not gonna have to worry about any pump fakes three yards from no, the ball. Not anymore. Tell you what, this is uh this is some good good old fashioned football that the drive started. It's eight plays for sixty four yards and over four minutes started with two little passes, but since then it's been nothing but body punches. Willie Williams in the secondary, one of six defensive backs, third and seven. Here comes Porter, here comes Palomalu, and the pass is incomplete. Palomalu had a huge Huge hit on Bowler out of bounds, and Brian, and Billick Brian is Billick. over there talking to him. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure right there that, that Troy Polamalu really cares what Mr. Billick has to say to him. <laughs> I'm sure he'll file that in his uh, career logs. He's in bounds, just gives him a little push. There's nothing wrong with that. So it's fourth down, and Pittsburgh holds him out. They're going to try for three, a 34 yard try by Stover. And he nails it with 8.30 to play in the now 8.29 to play in this game. Baltimore extends their lead 23 to 7. There is the new uh, majority owner of the Baltimore Ravens, Steve Bashotti, who is enjoying uh, his first ownership home game, season opening home game. And there's Art Modell, the legendary owner of the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens, who still has a small percentage of the team. And after the field goal and Stover here's the ensuing kickoff and Coakley a yard deep the rookie from Tuscola and finds a gap and is brought down by Chad Williams also Raymond Walls a 30 yard return tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes focusing on John Fox and Bill Belichick and it's a night of drama beginning with cold case followed by CSI Miami and without a trace and a special night all here tonight on America's most watched network, CBS, from the 30, Pittsburgh, first and 10. Hey, Fox is a good story for 60 minutes there, but Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots are going to win one of the next two Super Bowls again. I like it. You did their games in the preseason. Yeah, they're, they're pretty amazing. They remind me of my old Niner team organization. First and 10 from the 30. Roethlisberger, who threw a touchdown pass to Randall L. the first time. And his hit as he throws here, and it's incomplete, whistling over the head of Staley on the wing, who is covered by Demps. Second down and 10. They've already lost one quarterback today. 
If Roethlisberger should go down, and he did go down in practice this week as he injured a knee Wednesday in practice. In fact, he was carted off the field. It was a bruise. Brian St. Pierre, who came off the practice squad late this week, will be in the former Boston College quarterback. Second down and 10 from the 30. Four receivers, Mays and Antoine Randall L. rounding him out. Roethlisberger, great catch by Randall L. First down near midfield and touched by Reed, a 20-yard pickup and a first down. If you're the Baltimore defense, you've been so good today because you've been so aggressive. And you've been so good today because you've been all over Pittsburgh's almost every option. Don't let up now. You gave up one big play by a misplay by Ed Reed on that missed interception. Don't get play, uh, don't get soft now. Six in the secondary, first and 10. That's Veron Haynes picked up by Ray Lewis. It's a gain of four to the 46 yard line. Again, Deion Sanders, normally the nickel back is out, hurt a hamstring. That was back in the first half. He was covering somebody deep. Plexico Burris and hurt it, second down six. From the 46 of the Baltimore Ravens, Veron Hayes. And he's got to get to the 40. He's got the first down, tackled by, uh, by Anthony Weaver from behind at the 38. It's a gain of eight. Okay, you know, you talk about Deion and that hamstring. Probably his first two reps as a Raven at just flat out sprinting today, probably in the last two weeks, was one the punt return. And then that route he had to run with Plexico Burris, and the hand just didn't hold up. First and 10 for the rookie out of Miami of Ohio, who is on the fly, and it's. Antoine Randall L. Shy of a first down, but down to the 33-yard line. It's a pickup of six on the play. He was a first-round pick, was Roethlisberger, out of Miami of Ohio in the first first-round quarterback drafted by the Steelers since 1980. You know who they picked that year? Arizona State. Mark Malone. Mark Malone. There you go. I knew you'd get that. Second down and four. Mark Malone's running for the CBS affiliate in Chicago. Yes, he is. Just left the ESPN. Second and four. 33, Roethlisberger again, great catch by Lee Mays, who makes his first of the season. It's a pickup of eight. It is a first down to the 25-yard line of Baltimore. You know, the clock is an issue. We're at 636. Ball gets in there, ball, ball spotted, clock starts. Roethlisberger on first and 10. A little less dump-off pass to Haynes. Flag is thrown, incomplete, on the pass to the running back out of the backfield. Veron Haynes, who played at Georgia. It's going to be a personal foul, I think, against Baltimore. Personal foul on this a roughness, 52 defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. Well, you remember what we're always saying? You saw it last night on CBS. It's not the first guy that hits, it's the second guy. So, you know, Jeff Hardings, right here with Ray Lewis, Jeff Hardings gets in the first shot. Play's kind of older, he gets in the shot. Ray Lewis gets in the second shot. They don't catch the first guy. Last night, it was the Florida player that was that, was, that hit second. The Tennessee player hit him first. Right. Florida reacted, second guy got the penalty then, second guy gets the penalty now. At the 12-yard line, Roethlisberger cannot hear the play coming in, so now he has called something at the line. It is first and 10 at the 12, with his four receivers deployed, and they've only got one timeout. And now the officials have stopped the clock. And Roethlisberger was having a hard time hearing the call from the sideline. Kent Wiesenhunt is the new offensive coordinator for the Steelers, and he is... Please reset the clock to 6.22. 622. Helping Pittsburgh. More time. Well, now you've already got a play call. Don't even bother huddling. Now get up on the ball and be ready to snap this. I tell you, that penalty might have gotten Baltimore re, re energized. They need some energy. They seem flat on defense. First and 10 at the 12 for Roethlisberger. And gets away on the move, looking inside. He's got the receiver ward, but throws instead for the corner, which has nobody home. Incomplete. Randall L. was running across the goal line. Ward was in the back of the end zone. He didn't see Ward. He went for Antoine Randall L. It'll be second down.
All we're being told about Tommy Maddox is a elbow injury, and that is it. Right. Right elbow is passing elbow. Second down and ten. You'll find out about that tomorrow. Roethlisberger to the end zone. Caught for a touchdown and grabbed by Hines Ward, a 12-yard strike. And it, we, uh, it appears that the Pittsburgh Steelers are back in business. Remember what I said about the receivers helping out this young quarterback, Hines Ward, coming out of the, the inside slot, right up the hash mark. Quarterback puts it down there low and help out your quarterback. He puts it to a spot. You go down and get it. Hey, I'll tell you, they're going to go for two right here. And, you know, this guy's operating this offense, Ben Roethlisberger, the rookie out of Miami, Miami of Ohio, very confidently. A little different formation with Deuce Staley, Kevin, top of the screen. Yes. And they got Kreider as a wide out at the bottom of your screen. There's Deuce right there. And they're going for two. Roethlisberger. Being chased by Hartwell into the end zone for two. Deflected and incomplete. There was all kinds of white defensive jersey around the receivers but Baxter and Reed were in the back of that end zone and Roethlisberger has thrown his second touchdown pass of his career but missing on the two point here nothing wrong with this you go for two you're still ten back down now you're still two scores either way the NFL on CBS is sponsored by CDW the right technology right away and by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. The rookie quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, taking a look at the defensive picture. Sent from upstairs, two touchdown passes. But look what Terry Bradshaw did in his NFL debut. Yeah, well, this is sort of an emergency debut. Yes. Your debut is your first start. It's a lot easier, even for a rookie, to come in during a game and get into the pace. Baltimore Baltimore has taken a timeout Pittsburgh has one Baltimore has two is it looked like it looked like Pittsburgh was trying to set up for the onside kick well Brian Billick's special teams was basically in a semi safe situation Bill Cowher's kickoff team came out looking like they were getting ready to do some sort of an onside kick that's why Bri Brian Billick and his special teams coach Gary Zahner said hey, whoa, whoa, whoa let's go over something right here because we don't have the personnel we want now the hands team is in Watch it. Watch the front row and see the personnel that's out there on the kickoff return team. You've got Ed Reed. You have Will Demps. I mean, you've got people out there that are used to handling and catching the ball. And Pittsburgh is in is in classic onside kick position. But I'd say I would still this much time left. I would go ahead and pooch this thing about the 20, about the 30 yard line right. Well, B.J. Sands is back in. Remember, he was injured on the last kickoff, but he is back in there, back at about the 11-yard line. And so Jeff Reed will bang it deep. Which is at about the 12-yard line. And Sands is taken down by Harrison and Cushing on a 15-yard return. Coming next, game two of our CBS doubleheader. Browns against the Cowboys. Most of you will see that. Some of you see the Bills and the Raiders, Jets and the Chargers, Patriots and the Arizona Cardinals. They're going to mark the ball at the 28-yard line. Well, if I'm Dallas, I, I go after Jeff Garcia from the first snap of the ball, and I stay after him. It is a base 34 defense for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've got Ricard in the backfield with Jamal Lewis, and on first and 10, Lewis is stood up by Casey Hampton among many, and the ball was jarred free but blown dead, a gain of one on the play. And Lewis today, 23 carries and about 61 yards. So what Kyle Bowler needs right here in this Baltimore offense needs is a couple of good completions like they started that last possession with. I mean, you run inside, that means you're running into that guy right there, Casey Hampton. And even if he might be, somebody might have poked him in the ribs or hit him in the leg, he limping a little bit. I don't care. You don't want any part of Casey Hampton and going inside on this defense. Now Coakley has checked in five in the secondary for Pittsburgh. Second down and nine. And Lewis again. Ooh, it up. Higgins hit over once, and then he was really nailed by Casey guess, Hampton, the football. <laughs> Gain of a yard. 
Now there's one timeout for Pittsburgh and two for the Ravens as the clock continues to go. Here's Casey Hampton. Watch this flow and then up through the running back. This is how you get a, you get a center, you grab their shoulders, and as you grab them, you're driving them back, back. Make a cut, you're right there. Nice combo between Casey and backside with Hagan. Willie Williams becomes the sixth defensive back for the Steelers. Chester Taylor is in the backfield for Baltimore. Third down, eight near the 30-yard line. Wilcox, the tight end in motion. Outside they go. Wilcox with the grab. And they've got Willie Williams, who makes the stop at the 31, a gain of three, and well shy of the first down. And this, this possession, you're going to get a timeout. You've burned. Pittsburgh's going to use, well, basically their last timeout. You're going to have burned out two minutes off this clock, basically. A little less than two minutes. You're leaving your offense plenty of time. You're down by 10. You're down a touchdown and field goal now away from having a, uh, a tied ball game or a touchdown two-pointer and a field goal away from winning. Well, the executive producers of the NFL on CBS are Sean McManus and Tony Petiti. Today's game was produced by Bob Monsbach, who just finished the U.S. Open for... CBS, Amanzi, great to have you back in our truck today. And the always present director, Suzanne Smith, senior producer of the NFL Today, Eric Mann, director, Bob Matina, coordinating producer of CBS Sports, Harold Bryant, the associate director of today's game, Fred Johnson. And that is uh, worth a thousand words right there with the injured Tommy Maddox depressed and ailing on the sideline. Sixth three and out for Baltimore in this game. Antoine Randall-L, who has returned uh, several punts for touchdowns, is back at about the 25, and the Zastadil punt is high, and it is a beauty. From the 13, Antoine Randall-L dancing his way free. He got a great block, and there's a flag down, and he is out to the 45, but perhaps a clip. It's a block in the back at about the 20-yard line, so the rookie's going to have to start this ball at about the 10-yard line. He's going to score again against Baltimore. He's going to do it from 90 yards out. It's a long way to go with not a lot of time and no timeouts. You know, in case you, you weren't watching earlier, folks, Tommy Maddox, the starting quarterback of the Steelers, was injured on a sack. Ball, it was fumble. Illegal block in the back during the return. 92 of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. But Tommy Maddox was sacked. Ball was fumbled by Gary Baxter coming from the cor cornerback position. And on the follow through, there was some pretty funky stuff going on with his arm. Watch the high speed wobble. That just, that just doesn't look right. You gotta hope for Tommy and everything he's been through in his career and life that, that it, this isn't a serious injury. Four special teams penalties on the Pittsburgh Steelers today. First and 10, no breathing space from the nine for Roethlisberger. Ron Hayes is at his side in the backfield. And Roethlisberger moving up a bit, and a pass caught by Heinz Ward, who beats Ray Lewis, pro bowler against pro bowler. they got to keep going. It's out near the 33-yard line, a pick up a 25. You know, th this young quarterback may not be a scrambler. Remember how you watch, and, but the, the way he's able to scooch around in the pocket, sometimes it's much better to be a scoocher than it is to be a scrambler. <laughs> I've heard that many times. 34, first and 10. Roethlisberger right through the hands of Plexico Burris. The coverage by Raymond Walls, who has taken the place of the injured Deion Sanders. As we're seeing six defensive backs in the secondary for Baltimore. And here's what I'm talking about. You know, if you scramble, you run a long ways. But if you scooch, you, you just go a couple yards, and that really takes the angles away from the defenders. They have to start their rush all over. So they got Ward and Plexico Burris to the bottom of your screen. Randall L. and Mays to the top. Haynes in the backfield. Second down, 10, and Veron Haynes. Chased by Lewis and brought down by Davis Thomas. No way to stop the clock. It's a loss of a yard. They'll go back to about the 33. I can't see where you have an audible here. You had to play, call two plays in the on the last play. Third down and 10. Hardings with the shotgun snap for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Roethlisberger throws intercepted. Picked off by Chris McAllister. And the pro bowl down the side. He gets by Haynes and he is diving in for the touchdown. What a play.
a Veron Haynes made a wonderful play coming across and picking up Baxter on the blitz. The line did their part, but you know, sometimes the, the rookies or young quarterbacks see things that aren't there. And he saw something that wasn't there, and then he saw something you don't see real often. And that's a cornerback suddenly turn an interception into a punt return, a world-class punt return. That is the second interception for a touchdown in two seasons for McAllister. He had one last year. And you also might recall as the extra point is up and in by Stover, you also might recall he is the one who returned the missed field goal, 107 yards for a touchdown. And so he is a big play player. Roethlisberger throws his second pick. There's Veron Haynes. He's coming over here to block. But what you have to really look at is, hmm. <laughs> it's kind of a, I thought he was going to zig. He zagged. And McAllister sat there the whole time and watched the ball come into his hands. And then he put on a little prime time for you. And a nice play. Well, that should put it basically yeah. out of reach with 2.56 to play and a 30 to 13 Baltimore lead. That's yeah, kind of like what you usually say on Thanksgiving about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Eat. <laughs> Stick a fork in it. I think it's done. <laughs> Either one goes. <laughs> well, if you look ahead now, the Pittsburgh Steelers will play at Miami next week in Roethlisberger who is seeing some valuable playing experience today and not knowing the extent of the Maddox injury. You know, for Bill Cowher, he's going to have some interesting decisions to make. Well, you know, Tommy Maddox didn't come out in that sling to rest it. Right. I mean, they're, they're concerned about him moving that thing at all. It's a big blow to this football team. And that does not look good. The ensuing kickoff by Wade Ritchie, and it just trickles into the hands of Copley. He runs into his own block and then is brought down by Chant Williams at about the 31-yard line and 18-yard return. So there's Tommy Maddox, who was injured earlier today, and here's where they are over the next month. But if you look at those four teams, you know, who's a defensive team? Who isn't a defensive team on that list? Miami specializes in defense. Cincinnati and Marvin Lewis specialize in running the ball in defense. Cleveland's strong point at this point after early in the season is defense. And Dallas has one of the fastest defenses in the league. I don't care what Minnesota did to him last week. Minnesota's going to do that to a lot of teams a lot of weeks. Ray Lewis, we just saw right there, will take his show on to Cincinnati next week. It is a first down from the 32-yard line for Roethlisberger. Blocked by Haynes, a pass caught by Heinz Ward, who is brought down by Demps at about the 39-yard line with a gain of seven. These are really invaluable reps, though, for the young guy. You know, we yes. kind of joke around about stick a fork in him and everything else. These are, these are reps that will pay off maybe next week, maybe the week after, maybe next month. Second down and three. And that is dropped by Lee Mays. Randy, before the game uh, really got underway early in the contest, we talked about some of the things you were going to watch, and uh, yeah. let's begin with some of your cross talk. Balance as in not, and Dion as in gone. <laughs> Dion pulled that hamstring, and, and Pittsburgh's defense was, our offense was dominated for most of this game by Baltimore's defense those numbers were skewed by a late rally Raymond Walls has taken the place of the injured Sanders six in the secondary third and three Roethlisberger trying to find anybody as the pocket crumbles he's hit and brought down by Chad Williams that's the fourth Baltimore sack today I mean against a much better opponent could you ask for a bigger turnaround for the Baltimore Ravens yeah I mean just you talk all the time about your athletic arrogance and swagger and other kind of words like that. Baltimore has the good kind of swagger and the good type of athletic arrogance. We didn't see much of it last week, where you saw 60 minutes of it, or at least about 58 minutes of it, not counting that period they had there for about a, for about a minute or so when they drove that last drive. That takes us to the two-minute warning with Baltimore on their way to their first win of the season.
Those games are coming your way next, and here's a punt by the Pittsburgh Steeler punter, Guard Dockey. On his back, we're just going to let this ball float and get down at about the 11-yard line, and Pittsburgh cannot stop the clock. They're out of timeouts. And that was a 54-yard boot by Chris Gardaki. Injuries have been headlines in this game, and none more important for at least Baltimore than Todd Heap, their two-time Pro Bowl tight end. Yeah, James Ferrier, linebacker 51, right there on the right ankle slash lower leg of Todd Heap. And, you know, you, you think long-term with some of these injuries, and, you know, if, if Dion is or isn't really badly hurt, how long is he out? I'm not sure with training camp and preseason this team couldn't adjust, but without having a Todd Heap at tight end for a significant period of time, that is gigantic for the Baltimore offense. Well, Baltimore is going to win their second consecutive game over Pittsburgh. They won an overtime in the regular season finale a season ago, 13 to 10. So second straight, Brian Billick, Baltimore Raven win over the Steelers. All right, how, about, how about this one right here against Kansas City? If you're struggling offensively, I mean, this is the you look down their schedule. They've got that bye in four weeks, but Cincinnati next week is going to be very, very tough with with Marvin De Le Lewis's defense. And Joe Gibbs and the Washington Redskins have, have basically dusted off all the old game plans and proven that everything old is kind of new again in the NFL. Bowler finishes the day, 10 of 18, with no touchdowns and no interceptions. Jamal Lewis, 62 yards, 24 carries. So for a second consecutive time, does not gain 100 yards. He had 12 100-yard games in the 16 regular season games a season ago. Well, the most important thing for them, though, was a win. getting the W yep. after losing last week. And talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're just taking a look there earlier at Tommy Maddox. That's a talk about heat being important to this offense. You don't want to have to go through this AFC North with a rookie quarterback if you can avoid doing what Baltimore tried to do last year. Baltimore did not turn the ball over at all. They got 172 yards rushing. The defense had three takeaways and four sacks. So in a game that the Ravens consider a big one against their arch rival, and both players say differently than what Randy thinks <laughs> in terms of this not being a rivalry, but they feel it is. Okay, so for Randy Cross, Kevin Harlan saying so long from Baltimore with the final score, the Ravens 30 and the Steelers 13. Coming up next, game two of our doubleheader, Cleveland and Dallas, Buffalo, Oakland, the Jets in San Diego, and Arizona hosting New England. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.